Okay, welcome everybody. This is Manhattan Community Board 1. Welcome to our monthly board meeting. Today is Tuesday, June 28th, uh, 2022. I am the chair, Tammy Meltzer, and we are going to run a nice quick meeting this evening. It's a beautiful night out. We hope everyone will have the opportunity to vote. So, in light of it being voting season, please note I'll be a little um, harsh on the timers. Keep everybody moving. So, if you have not had your opportunity to go out and vote, you can do so this evening after the meeting. All righty. So, with that, we open our public session. Thank you so much for those who are joining us. We're going to recognize first Eric Breen from the Elizabeth Fast Ferry. He should be in our public uh, attendee section. I don't see him. Oh, there he is. Hold on. Um, I will say once uh, I call your name, if you don't mind putting your hand up, so we know I, uh, we're going to go Eric Green, and then we're going to go Roy Sasson, and then Max Bookman. In that order, if you would not mind having your hands up. All right, so Eric, welcome. Yes, go. Um, good evening, everyone. Can everybody hear me? We can. Okay, great. I was just able to unmute myself. Please continue, Eric. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I thought I was going to respond to questions, but um, I'm the uh, one of the owners of Elizabeth Fast Ferry, and we're starting a uh, um, uh, sustainable fast ferry service. Um, between uh, Pier 15 in uh, Manhattan and Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, we've been working on the project for um, past uh, two and a half years, all through COVID, slightly before COVID. Um, our company is the leader in uh, US electric ferry technology, and we have a completely emissions-free solution, um, electric, um, uh, electric main propulsion, and we even have uh, uh, tanks for bilge water and everything on the boat. Yeah, okay. okay. Keep going. Right. Right. That's right. Just, there we go. There we go. Keep, okay. Keep going. Okay. So we're um uh we're we're um working with the uh uh Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce, Elizabeth Destination and Marketing Organization and um starting up the ferry service uh landing passengers into Pier 15 and um we want to do it um you know, we want to be the first electric ferry service in uh, New York Harbor. Uh, we have a DOT grant application in, um, and we're, um, uh, you know, uh, really looking to uh, actually gain the, the support of the community board as more of more of an ally because um, it's a it's a tremendous undertaking. We want to uh, set the precedent for uh, clean waterfront, um, clean waterborne transportation in the harbor. Um, we have. Uh, you know, quite a bit of experience in that regard, and uh, we uh, want to work towards that effort. We have the World Cup coming to New York and New Jersey. Um, I think uh, I'm running out of time here, right? He did. He did. Okay, since you okay. since you came and presented um, at our committee, we were very happy to have you. Um, I want to, we can welcome you back to give us updates and do another presentation at a larger meeting um, or to do Q&A. It's hard to do Q&A here, um, but if you don't mind staying on until the reports, if there are questions at that point, um, I would allow uh, questions and recognition. I do see Colin has his hand up now, so we'll recognize Colin now. Okay. Yeah, sorry, my fault for missing the initial meeting, um, and I didn't know about this, and that's totally on me. But just wanted to uh, congratulate you, and uh, you know, not beyond my role on the community board, I, I work in renewables and energy, and this is about time something like this happens. So good for you. Uh, feel free to reach out to me for whatever kind of help and support you need, because I think we really need this. So good job. Great, thank you, thank you. So. Eric, if you don't mind hanging on once the presentation, I think with the slides comes out from transportation, um, if there are any to share, then we would very much be uh, happy if you could answer questions at that point. Oh, absolutely. And I apologize for not really knowing how this was going to go. I would have been a little more prepared with a two minute speech there, but I'll, I'll definitely hang on. No, no problem at all. 
Not a problem. And uh, we can certainly have more sessions with you coming back again and again. So have no fears. Um, we, you Thanks. are a positive ad and a great neighbor and setting precedents for what the future of sustainable water transport can be. Thank you. All righty. Well, thank you. We're going to move on then to Roy. And Roy, I apologize. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. Roy Sasson and then Max Bookman. You pronounce it correctly. Thank you. Um, so my name is Roy Sasson. I am uh, representing uh, the buildings uh, 71 Nassau Street and 65 Nassau Street in uh, opposition to the Hyde Lounge slash 24 John Street uh, liquor license application. Um, the two buildings are uh, the two residential buildings directly adjacent to the location, to the Artisan Hotel. Um, I've personally lived in uh, what, these two buildings uh, for the last 20 years. Um, and uh, for over a year now, uh, my neighbors are, we've been uh, protesting and voicing our opposition to the request uh, for a liquor license. And we were frankly uh, pretty appalled that uh, um, earlier this month, uh, the CB1 Licensing and Permits Committee voted in favor of letting uh, the request proceed after it actually uh, rejected it and with good reason uh, twice in the past. The illegal gang activity, the shootings, the drug dealings that took place in the hotel have been discussed at length, so I won't repeat them, but entrusting the same hotel with a liquor license would frankly be reckless endangerment of our community. Um, yeah, COVID was difficult for the hotel. It was difficult for everyone, but it was only that establishment that attempted to maintain business by turning a blind eye to criminal activity within its walls with complete disregard for public safety. The economy may have improved, but... Uh, I believe we lost you a bit here. He cut out. He did. If he comes back, we'll certainly let him come on again. I don't know what happened, but uh, let's move to our next speaker, which is Max Bookman. After Max Bookman, we are going to uh, Don Gibson, Philippe Loria. Erica, and then Sal, uh, Loria, I don't know if they're going to speak together. Okay. Tammy, I'm, I'm sorry, point of information. I just didn't catch all those names. Would you mind just saying their name again before they speak? I'm sorry. The next speaker is going to be Max Bookman. Thank you. After Max uh, Bookman will be Don Gibson. All right. Um, good evening, CB1. My name is Max Bookman. I'm an attorney and I represent the Hyde Lounge at the Artisan Hotel on John Street. Uh, tonight, you will be voting on a licensing and permits committee recommendation to approve my client's uh, liquor license application with stipulations. Uh, there were some opposed at the committee meeting and um, some emotions from the group in opposition ran a little high. I think you just heard from one of them. Um, part of what they did was call uh, the Hyde Lounge a nightclub. Um, if you hear anyone else say that tonight, I ask you to please look at the stipulations that the committee approved. 10 p.m. closing on Sundays, 11 p.m. closing Monday through Wednesday, midnight closing Thursday through Saturday. That's the latest this place will ever be open, midnight. No live music, background music only two private events like corporate holiday parties a month, no promoted events, no promoters allowed, no ticketed events, no scheduled performances, no outdoor space, no operable windows, maximum 100 person occupancy, no dancing. What kind of nightclub has no dancing? Nightclubs don't have these restrictions. That's because it's not a nightclub. This is a hotel bar and lounge, plain and simple. These stipulations are a compromise. The hours of 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. are earlier than what we had wanted. We wanted more corporate parties in December around holiday time. 
We agreed to these compromises because that's what this process is about. It's about being reasonable and compromising. It's not about denying applications outright, but it does take two to compromise. If you rip up this compromise, as you heard the opposition just asking you to do, and take the extreme position of overruling your committee and rejecting us outright, that does not mean we don't get a liquor license. And I want to be clear about that. It just means that these stipulations that we compromised on do not apply and the SLA is not bound to follow them. In my experience, and this community board knows me well, the SLA is extremely unlikely to follow a CB1 recommendation to outright deny a liquor license for a bar and lounge on the top of a hotel. So please follow your committee's recommendation. It's an eminently reasonable compromise and it works for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max. Don Gibson is next followed by the Laureos. I have a Philip and a Sal. I don't know if they're both speaking, but if you are both speaking, please put your hands up. Yes, I'm having trouble finding Don Gibson. If you're here, please put your hands up. I'm scrubbing through the list right now. Um, Dan, we may need to circle back for Don Gibson. No problem. We have the Laureos. It's L O R I A is the last name. Yep. We have Philip Loria with their hand up. Here we go. And Sal as well. Thank you. Yep. Bill, you should be able to unmute and speak. Good evening, everyone. My name is Philip Loria, and I'm an owner of the Artisan Hotel and Hyde Lounge. I speak tonight in hopes of receiving your support and approval of our liquor license application. But most importantly, to assure you that my organization and I will operate Hyde Lounge professionally, responsibly, safe, and with the utmost respect for the community and our neighbors. I am confident that, as we have already done with the Artisan Hotel, Hyde Lounge will be welcome and loved by all and will evolve into a community stable where we can connect, relax, and unwind. During the liquor license application, we realized that there was some misinformation about our venue, and it is for those reasons that we made our best efforts to invite everyone to our establishment and apprise everyone as to our operation, how it will be run, its hours, staffing, location, security, safety, and to address any concerns that anyone had. Based on our meetings, compromises were made as reflected on our stipulations. Furthermore, the majority of those who attended or reached out were satisfied and confident that Hyde Lounge would be granted a liquor license. What is disheartening and sad to me is that there was a select few that never visited the establishment or even attempted to have a dialogue with my partners or I but for some reason our intent on opposing our liquor license solely based on myth, truths, and conjecture. They claim we're a nightclub, we are not. Our hours of operation, small size, no DJs, no live music, and many stipulations dictate otherwise. We're characterized as a rooftop, we are not. We are fully enclosed, located on 20 and 21. Furthermore, we have guests on the 19th floor directly below our lounge. Any loud music will impact the hotel before any neighbors. They claimed that there was a shooting at the hotel. There was no shooting at the hotel. The shooting was on John Street, nothing to do with the hotel. Our only involvement was assisting the police with video surveillance. The first precinct has confirmed to the community board there was no, been no incidents at the hotel and that we have always cooperated with them. They claim we're bad operators, yet we're the number rank, one ranked hotel in the financial district with 200, 2,000 plus verified reviews. It is my hope that based on the testimony and real verified facts that my team and members of the community and public have been presented with you will see that the opposition's narrative is simply not supported by the facts thank you very much and uh, philip and then sal again if you feel that philip has said it all um certainly you do not need to speak what good evening everyone my name is sal loria the operating partner of the Artisan Hotel since inception, and I've been in the hospitality business for 20 plus years. I take extreme pride in my work, my staff, guests, and community. This is always a top priority for me. During the liquor license process, I've heard some inaccurate and meritless statements made, which compel me to appear tonight and present the real, verifiable, and supportive facts about our operation, and I urge you all to confirm them. The Artisan Hotel is a four-star elite hotel which caters to business, international, and domestic travelers. We also serve many of the neighborhood residents, families, when they come to visit. Who we are and the true consensus of the public's feelings should be and can be easily confirmed by, number one, TripAdvisor. 
which is the gold standard for hotel reviews. We have a perfect five star rating with close to 400 reviews. Currently ranked number eight out of 519 hotels in New York and number one in the financial district. Expedia.com is the number one hotel booking platform in the world. We have over 1,600 reviews with a 4.7 out of five exceptional rating. Only 10 hotels out of approximately 600 hotels in all of New York City have an exceptional rating from Expedia. We are proud to be one of them. Hotels.com, we have a 9.4 out of 10 exceptional rating with over 1,500 reviews. In addition to operations, I attend the Build the Block neighborhood safety meetings. I'm in constant communication with the first precinct and assist in any way possible to keep the block safe. And this was also confirmed by Mary Mom, a member of the Liquor License Committee. Nick Lorandano of the first precinct invited me to attend an NYPD nightlife meeting for venue owners and managers, which I gladly attended and participated. On a final note, I have an open door policy for any, any neighbors who wish to see the hotel establishment and proposed lounge. Anyone that has visited in the past has left very happy and satisfied and are known to be in favor of the lounge. Okay, everyone, two minutes. We're being tough on that. Um, yes, Thank you. I figured out um, Don. Don Gibson. Don Gibson. Okay, let's. So, Don Gibson, Tele Liberatos, uh, Salvador, and then Benjamin Peters. Okay. Uh, so, Don Gibson, uh, you're on the phone. Star six will unmute you. Star six. Okay, well, it seems like they may be having some trouble with that. So I would just recommend we go. Um, Roy Sasson has um, come back. Tammy, did you want to give them a couple seconds? If he feels he needs it, yes. But okay, I believe that we do. Um, so just so you know, uh, Mr. Sasson, you're not getting the full two minutes. You can unmute though. Yes, thank you. I was. Uh, Remuted last time I was talking. So just to um, wrap up, and uh, uh, I will point out that I did visit the hotel and I was uh, there with uh, Philip Loria. So I do know uh, the lounge. Um, I'll wrap up just by pointing out that we already have um, six active liquor licenses within 500 feet of, of the hotel um, and two pending. That's uh, twice as many as. The 500 foot rules would uh, imply, and there's already a lot of late night noise and fallout from drinking on John Street, and we see no public interest in having another establishment um, that has shown zero regards to the needs of the neighborhood in the past. Um, and in summary, we urge the board to reject the application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on, we have Erica and then Telly. Not seeing an Erica. Um, and then who's who's the I next person? Her, Erica has her hand up. Oh, there, Erica. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. And then Telly Liberatos. Okay, Erica, you can go ahead and uh, unmute and speak. Hello. Yes, Good we evening. hear you. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. My name is Erica Dionisio. I'm the general manager of the Artisan Hotel, and I'm here to support the opening of the High Lounge. Uh, I have worked for the owners of the Artisan Hotel for over 15 years, and I can assure you the Hyde Lounge will be a great addition for the community. Um, this establishment will create jobs and create additional tax revenue for the city, but most importantly, be a gathering place for our guests and community and for the community members to meet and relax and, and unwind. 
we are proud to be the number one hotel in the financial district. Um, you could, like my owners had said, you could go to our uh, reviews and TripAdvisor, Expedia, uh, Hotels.com, Booking.com, and find out um, all the great reviews we have and the great work that we do as a team. I mean, again, I invite everyone to come in. Our doors are open. You're more than welcome to come in and see our operations. Um, if there's anything, anything pending, anything you'd like to know about us, um, you could call me at any time. I'm always here. Um, thank you very much for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, Erica. That moves us to Telly Liberatos. I don't actually see, uh, see Telly Liberatos as a name who may be a dial in user. So if you were a dial in user. Star six. Star six to put your hand up, please. Until Sorry, we start three to put your hand up, star six to unmute. Star yes. three. Okay, I have not seen Telly yet. Um, so then it's Salvatore. Who I do see. Um, Salvatore, you're uh, free to unmute. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. So welcome. Okay. My name is Salvatore Loduca, and I am a co owner of the Artisan Hotel at 24 John Street, and also a principal officer of the applicant tonight, Hyde Lounge Inc. I wanted to briefly address our sensitivity and effort to become a part of and staple of the downtown financial district and community. Our main theme has always been about connectivity. When we initially designed the building, we wanted the architecture to be distinctive, but yet blend in with the block, tying in the historical and contemporary features of the facade. We feel that we accomplished that task. We sought to connect the history of John Street and bring the past to the present. Through research, we found that in 1913, a plaque and an inscription of the origins of John Street was placed on a column of the Corbin building on the John Street side. When I called landmarks, they said that the plaque had been stolen or destroyed during the renovation of the Fulton Street station. I asked if they would mind if I recreate recreated the plaque and placed it on our building, which they said they would have no problem. That plaque is now listed and noted on the historical marker database. John Street was named after John Harpending, who in the late 1600s, along with three other tanners, purchased this land bounded by Maiden Lane and Street Broadway to the then Manhattan coast and designated as the shoemaker's land. In honor of that history, we attempted to incorporate elements of the woods and leather in the interior design of the rooms. Continuing in the same vein of incorporating the history of John Street, we've sought to infuse those same elements in an elegant manner and came up with the name Hyde Lounge. Our theme has always been about connectivity. It is emphasized in our website, connecting to our guests, helping to connect them to themselves, to the community in which we sit, and through Hyde, connecting guests to each other. Though Through Hyde, we seek to help connect all the elements together and provide a space that people can enjoy and connect with one another. Thank you. Okay, Tammy, who's next? I believe that would be the dial-in user that is probably Tele Liberatos. Let's um, thank you, Salvatore, by the way, for speaking. And that was Salvatore Loduca, I believe. See the phone number? Hello, everybody. Hi, can What's you hear me? Yes. And this is? Yes, hi. Tele Liberatos. Well, Tele. Hi. Good, uh, good, after, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, just, uh, you know, I've uh, been a resident uh, in the financial district for uh, over 10 years. Um, I'm very familiar with John Street for uh, many reasons. Uh, I frequently travel through the Fulton Street Station. I patronize the uh, Arroy D, uh, the Thai restaurant around there. Uh, my siblings and parents, they stay at the Artisan Hotel when they visit from Greece. Um, you know, I could tell you that the Artisan Hotel is a top-notch establishment. Uh, the place is absolutely stunning. Their service is on point, and they truly create a welcoming experience. Um, since they opened their doors, the street looks a lot brighter and their presence makes me feel more comfortable because they always have a doorman in front of the building. Um, you know, knowing that, uh, that the same owners of the Artisan Hotel 
will own and operate the uh, Hyde Lounge, I uh, will wholeheartedly welcome this establishment. I'm certain they will create and curate a place uh, for uh, residents, businesses, tourists that will love to enjoy, which is essential to the financial district and its continued growth and experience. And uh, that's that's what I have to say. I I fully support this. Thank you very much. You don't have to use your whole two minutes. We appreciate you giving us a couple seconds back. So the last uh, person on this topic is going to be Benjamin Peters. Um, we will find you, Benjamin. I don't necessarily see you in the thing. So if you are done, I found him. He's okay. good to go. Hello. Right. Can you hear me? Just wait a sec, Benjamin. It, after Benjamin, we're going to Susan Lee. Roger Byram and then Carrie Roble. So, in that order, Benjamin, thank you. You are the last on this topic. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, my name is Benjamin Peters. I am the doorman at the Artisan Hotel. I'm also a member, public member of the community board, as well as my mother. I work here at 24 John Street. She works at 66 John Street down the block. Basically, moral of the story. Long story short, I'm here to support the opening of the Hyde Lounge in the hotel. Um, this can be a great benefit to the community because we do have noise issues. However, they do not come from this hotel. And without saying names, I think we know the establishments that they do come from. I am the doorman. I am currently the overnight doorman. And I see the problems that people are talking about with my own eyes. I see it almost every Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Thursdays. These noises do not come from us. We are very quiet and we are very clean. I am one of the people who maintains the front of the hotel. I am the doorman. And so the, peop the, the Hyde Lounge, it's not open to the public. It is open to guests of the hotel only, and you cannot get past the first floor without a security key card that only employees and guests have. Um, really, I, I walk, obviously, John Street every day to work. I prefer it to Fulton Street um, for obvious reasons, and um, me and my mother are both very comfortable walking on John Street. Um, the, relating to the noise issue, though, this will not come from us. It cannot come from us. We are not that type of place. We will not have a noise complaint when we open. This is not something that's going to happen. Um, long story short, I support the opening of the Hyde Lounge. I am the doorman, and I think it will be extremely beneficial to the residents of the hotel as well as the community. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for coming and for speaking up. That's fantastic. Um, that is the end of this part of the session for Hyde Lounge. We're moving on to the next topic. And the next person to speak, I believe, is Susan Lee. Susan, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, Susan. Welcome to this community Hi. board. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for um, allowing me the opportunity to be here tonight. I am Susan Lee. I am a resident of Tribeca and Community Board One. First of all, I want to say that um, thank you for the community board's effort in um, amplifying the voice of Chinatown community that has long been ignored or perhaps silenced by the city for too long. Um, I, today, we took a straw poll of members in my WhatsApp group to see how many of our members spoke with the borough based jail outreach team. Not one person out of our group of 80 met with or spoke with Pauline Chan or Xiao Ming Chao. I respectfully request the city to post logs or documents demonstrating that these individuals indeed went door to door to perform outreach. I have not heard about any stakeholders meeting again. I respectfully request the city to disclose how these meetings were publicized. Which ethnic media source did you advertise such meetings? Was it press? Was it print or radio media? As a resident of CB1, I am proud of the advocacy this board has demonstrated. Thank you again for amplifying our concerns. However, I am disappointed, frustrated, and upset with the way the city has treated the Chinatown community. We are tired of being gaslighted. We demand transparency. Please show us documentation of your outreach. Thank you. 
Susan, I don't think there's anybody on this board who disagrees. We have seen such planned, planned and coordinated hiding of information, lack of responsiveness as a city agency responsible for advocating for the community, that it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. So thank you for coming. Thank you for speaking. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for everyone's advocacy. Uh, you know, we're, there are a lot of strong, strong voices on the board. We're lucky to have new leadership in elected office and we will see uh, where that goes. And I can see Alice right now shaking her head. I'm sure. All right. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. Let's move to Roger Byram. Um, it's nice to see everybody. It's been too long. Um, I just wanted to say that um, the landmarks committee that I chaired for 20 years, I thought went through a, a very low point with a decision on 250 Water Street uh, when a large amount of community input was, in my opinion, disrespected and ignored <clears throat> by LPC and the commissioners. But I want to say today I attended with leadership of CB1, the meeting at LPC regarding 60 Wall Street. I know 60 Wall Street's been a difficult uh, issue for the community board. I was surprised to see how the vote went. I didn't stay, I'm afraid, but it was 26-16. But I'm really proud to report that today, leadership of the community board and leadership of um, the Landmarks Committee came out very strongly along with all uh, many others, uh, 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 preservation community, uh, preservation uh, organizations. And we accomplished a unanimous uh, decision by LPC commissioners to agree with our point of view that the amendments suggested for 60 Wall Street are not harmonious as they're required to be with 55 Wall Street. So I just want to say it was a very proud moment for me uh, to see how we as a community came together on that and that we brought in other uh, preservation interested parties. And I think this is a turning point and I just welcome the leadership of the community board and the leadership of uh, the Landmarks Committee to make this turn and for us to move on to further successes. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. We really appreciate that. Um, and we appreciate your continued advocacy as a public member. It's always good to have you here. Alrighty, so moving on from Roger, we're going to do Carrie Roble. Who's from the Hudson River Park summer programming. After Carrie, we're going to do Graham Birchall. There I see Carrie. Okay, Carrie, you can unmute now. Hi everyone, Carrie Robe with Hudson River Park. I'm here to just share on some of the parks programming this summer. Um, first off, at Hudson River Parks Pier 40, our wet lab is open. This is a research aquarium, an amazing environmental education space. So on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and then Sundays starting in July, you can come learn about local wildlife with our Hudson River Park team. Um, we also have our summer camp registration open so you can book environmental education field trips now um, this will be starting field, uh, field trips will be starting on july 5th and go through the end of august you can also participate in a wide range of exercise programming and fitness programming called healthy on the hudson they're all presented in partnership with lululemon and Sunset on the salsa, uh, Sunset Salsa is another popular program. This is at Pier 76 this year. There's many other types of dance classes, including Afro-Caribbean, and all of those have lessons and then opportunities to just dance afterwards. Later in the summer, we'll have shoreline ecology tours um, at our Pier 26 tide deck. There's also opportunities to come fishing, catch and release fishing with us at big city fishing programs on Sundays at Pier 51. And Hudson River Park Kids, it's children's entertainment, and that's on Thursdays at Pier 63. 
Then as you look to the end of the summer, Blues Barbecue, uh, one of our favorite programs is on August 13th at Pier 76 and Submerge Marine Science Festival will be on October 14th and 15th. You can see all of our programs for the summer on our website, HudsonRiverPark.org and feel free to email education at Hudson River Park, or excuse me, at hrpt.ny.gov if you have questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming, Carrie. And if you would like, um, you are always welcome to come to our waterfront parks or uh, committee. If, they are, if the timing does not work for you, we are happy to have you covered in our executive as well. But I know Paul has had you come many times and Andrew from our CB1 is on the Hudson River Park Advisory Council as well. So you are always welcome to come and present in CB1 and we are delighted to drive more people to visit the amazing park. I might be biased, but okay. So thank you, Carrie. Alrighty, next moving on, Graham, virtual. Graham, you can unmute. Talk on behalf of the downtown boathouse, but tonight I'm actually talking as a concerned member of the public about the resolution you're going to vote on regarding electric ferries. And uh, for the record, I love ferries. I especially love battery electric ferries, um, but you're not going to get a battery electric ferry. What you're voting on is a resolution for a diesel ferry. Uh, there is no battery electric ferry anywhere in the world that meets the technical specifications that you have been given we, the, the, the speed, the distance, the turnaround time, uh, it just does not exist. And it does not exist because the batteries don't exist. The nearest ferry that is close is one in Norway, which is one third slower and, and has a much slower turnaround time, which allows it to recharge every time. It's also a catamaran, whereas this is a monohull. So this is going to be a diesel ferry. And you're not going to get one ferry. You're going to get many diesel ferries, um, not just this one from Elizabeth. You're going to get one from Carteret, from South Farmboy, from Jersey City, and from Bayonne. If that's what you want, that's fine. But that's what you're going to get, right? They're just the technology does not allow anything else. Uh, so, and the downside to that is you're basically supporting a fairly high carbon dioxide output means to transport and it's probably going to be some weight damage in some fragile parts of the harbor uh, all i'm saying is know what you're voting for and what you're going to get is a diesel ferry thanks Graham, i think that's why i asked the operator to stay on for when we discuss this for the resolution that he should be able to come back and have uh an answer to that during part of the business session so i did invite him to stay so tell me that I, that's great and the questions you should ask is when will it be battery electric and give us an example of a battery electric ferry that meets the specifications anywhere in the world today all righty well thank you thank for you. that all righty my pleasure thanks graham uh let's see where we are at the moment i believe that concludes um people who have signed in for the public session let me do one quick refresh because it is, after all, technology. Um, and mm -hmm. while we are refreshing to mm -hmm. check the attendance and sign in sheets, I am reminding all of our board members to please check the chat um, for sign in. To make sure you are signed in, please check your emails to fill out the uh, OPA vote if you have not, um, which was run as a test vote to our elections that will be coming up soon. Um, Lucian. Yes. We still have a hand up in the public set in the attendee section, but I don't have anybody left who signed in uh, before six o'clock. Well, you have a couple minutes. You want me just to unmute them for two minutes? Uh, give that if it. How many people are we looking at tonight? One. Yeah. Debbie Strickler, you can unmute. Debbie Strickler, you were sent an invitation to unmute yourself. 
If you would like to speak as I see your hand up, please unmute yourself at this time. Tammy, it doesn't look like um, they're at the computer appears. So, okay, so uh, let's just take her hand down for her. There we go. And then there's a dial in user. Okay. Dial in user, you're um, invited to unmute star six, I believe. Hey, uh, Lucia, this is Mark. Uh, just uh, wanted to let you know I'm calling in for attendance purposes. I'll be. So Mark, Mark? Mark, that's Mark on dial in. We will Mark, we will move you over, but for attendance purposes, you must be on video. Not my rules. Yeah, we'll for a okay, well, I've read I've renamed um, renamed him so you know it's Mark. Um, so we can find him. Fantastic. Right. All righty, uh, let's move on with the agenda. Let's close the public session. And then we have a public hearing. Lucian, can you open and close the public hearing? Because I do not see anybody signed up for it. Okay, well, the public hearing was just to remind everyone was uh, about um, the summary of guidelines for stabilized apartments, lots, and hotels for 2022, 2023, uh, recently adopted by the Rent Guidelines Board uh, this month. Uh, it was a cause for much consternation in the run stabilized community and for those who are um, you know, worried about uh, the, the cost impacts on renters. Um, I won't go into the rationale the guidelines board used for uh, the increase, which was one of the largest in, in the last couple of years. Um, however, um, we wanted to make sure that we had a topical hearing um, uh, uh, based on that, but uh, seeing that there is no Sign ups for this hearing. Um, I recommend that uh, this hearing be open and closed, Tammy. Thank you. So at 655, we open it. And at 655, having no one having signed up, we uh, uh, close it. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's move on and we will start the business session. For those who are joining us for the first time, please note unless you are asked to speak. Recognized by the chair, you may not speak. That applies for all our board members. And the public is not allowed to speak, although you may put your hand up if I ask and are searching for you um, to answer a question during the business session. So, with that, let's do a roll call for adoption of the May 2022 minutes. This is again roll call. Does your attendance, attendance requirements pursuant to the new laws are that your Video must be on for the meeting. Okay, Mimi, I'm going to call the question. Let's take it away. Sure. Um, so video must be on. Sorry. Will somebody let me know if video isn't on? Since I'm looking at the vote sheet. Uh, yeah. Cool. And Maruso. <laughs> Uh, here, I'm going to give everybody before you go down this road, Mimi. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give everybody two minutes to get your videos on. Tammy, point of clarification if the video is not on, are they able to vote? Nope. They are not. Mimi, can I ask you if you can see me? Because I can't see my it's, video. I will call people whose videos I do not see. Let's let's just make that a little bit easier. I do not okay, see. Okay, Tammy. Uh, somebody please move Bruce Ehrman over. He's stuck in attendees. I see Mark needs to have his video on. Everybody else I see thus far has their videos on. Vicki Cameron. Yep, there you are. Thank you, Vicki. Betty Chow. Joe Lerner. Okay. Chow, I need your video to go on, although I think Chow is having signed in difficulties. So I'm going to ask somebody to double check on Chow. Oh, there is. Yep, I see him coming in now. Um, Mariama? I'm here. You need to have video on to count for vote. Megan? I... 
when your video is on, you will be counted for vote. If you cannot have video on until then, when you come on with video, you'll be. It's not, I don't think it's letting me start my video. I have a bad connection. I'm at the, uh, the poll site. Oh, I can I'll see you. Again. You're on. Uh, you see you. Am I on? We now we can see, see you. We can see you. So I'm only missing two community board members as of right now, and that's Chow and Megan. Oh, you can't see me. We I, can. I am here. We can, Mariama. It says my video's on. I don't know. Yeah, Mariama, we are able to see you. Oh, we okay. We can see you. And can you see me? Uh, this is Chow. Uh, yes. yes. Now we can, Chow. Thank you so much. Okay, so that leaves Mark and Megan. Not Megan Brown Kennedy. Because Megan Brown Kennedy, thank you so much. I do see you. Alrighty. With that, everybody knows where we're at. Take it away, Mimi. And Marissa. No video. Okay. Blank. Blank, yes. Brown Kennedy. I know you're there. All right, uh, Cameron. Cameron, yes. Thank you, Cassell. Collie. Chang. Yes. Chapman. Chapman, yes. Thank you, Charcutian. Charcutian, yes. Thank you, Cole. Oh yes. Thank you. Coleman. Yes. Thank you. Corman. Corman, yes. Thank you. Kucha. Kucha will be late. Okay. Curtis. Curtis is absent. Alrighty. Airman. Airman, yes. Thank you. Flores. Laura's yes. Thank you. Flynn, yes. Forsberg. Forsberg votes yes. Yes. Friedman. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Froman. Froman, yes. Thank you. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein. Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant. Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta. Gupta, yes. Thank you. James. James, yes. Thank you. Joyce. Patricia, Joyce. All right. Uh, Ju. Ju, yes. Thank you. Kay. Kay, yes. Thank you. Canal. Canal, yes. Thank you. Kettering. Kettering, yes. Thank you. Copel. Uh, Joel Capel. Joel is late. He's okay. uh, he's commuting. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, Learner. Learner, yes. Thank you, Lunson. Uh, Liz Lewinson. All right, Lynn. Bernard Lynn. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lion. Lion, yes. Thank you. Mahahan, please tell me if I'm mispronouncing anybody's names. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Mahoney? Mahoney, yes. McHugh? That's the Megan, I believe, that does oh. have video on. Got it. Uh, Meltzer? Meltzer, yes. Awesome. Minsley? Minsley, yes. Thank you. More? More, yes. Thank you. Robinson? Desiree Christina Robinson? All right. Uh, Schneck? Schneck votes yes. All right. Star? Star votes yes. 
Thank you. Jimmy Song? Jimmy Song votes yes. Thank you. Vera Song? Vera votes yes. Thank you. Townley? Townley votes yes. Thank you. Z? Z votes yes. Thank you. You? You votes yes. Thank you. Zelter? Zelter votes yes. Thank you. And do we know if anyone from earlier, uh, Brown Kennedy? Looks like you're logged in. Did you get my vote? It was I, yes. Oh, okay, yes, thank you. Um, Cassell? Cauley? Um, did Cassell say something? I actually can't. I can't see two screens at once today. I don't see Cassell. Okay. All right. And then Kali. No, not seeing Helena. And Justine's late. Curtis. Absent. All right. Okay. I think that's um, Trisha is also absent. Yes, I believe so. Copel, Joel. Hold on. Uh, Elizabeth is reconnecting. Uh, she, if you just give her a second, she's reconnecting. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Lewis. Who's that? Tell them, tell them to sign in here. It's in the email. Let's see. It's asking me for a password. Yeah. It says I have an incorrect email address. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Mark, can you text Lucian and he'll walk you through or I can, whatever is easier for you. All right. Uh, Lewinson. Available yet. I, yeah, I see her logging on through the phone. So I see her here, but I don't, she has to put camera on and unmute. Okay. Are you talking about me? I, I am Elizabeth. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Sorry. I'm in a car. I'm a passenger. I'm not a driver, but I'm in a car and that's, and I just keep on going in and out. So sorry about that. I, hopefully I'm now connected. Um, uh, can you see me? I can see you. Would you like okay. to vote for the minutes? Yes. 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 So the answer is yes. Excellent. And, and then the vote is yes. <laughs> so, okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. Leave your camera on. Even if you are a passenger, I'm so sorry. I understand if you have to log in and come back in and out. Yeah, I'll leave my camera on. I just might be shaking about a little bit, but okay. 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 No problem. Alrighty. Uh, we had a couple other holdouts. Um, I see Chow's camera needs to go back on Jason. Uh, Mark is working on it. I just sent him a text. Mariama. And Megan. I'm still here. I'm just at a polling site with people voting. So, uh, you know, the, it's in a school and the, the uh, Wi-Fi is not very good. Unfortunately, uh, I, yeah. I need you to leave the camera on, even if you are on mute. Um, for it most keeps of telling me the the connection is unstable, but I'll I'll try to put it back on. Thanks, appreciate it. I don't make the rules. I just got to try and follow them. Alrighty. Um, with that, I think we're good for the adoption of the minutes. Let's move on. Uh, to updates from our elected officials. I see Hannah Wienerman is with us and Theo is from assembly member news office. So we'll take those two in that order. Thank you so much. Hammy, are you timing them or no? Uh, yeah, they can get, uh, you said, uh, elected officials get 3 to 5, uh, representatives to give full reports. And seated electeds get up to 10. So if they can manage in three, that would be fantastic. So we can get people out. 
All right, so let's put it at three, Lucy, and then that way they know as they go over, there's that okay. pressure for them to wrap up. Uh, because I also see that Senator Kavanaugh is joining, so that would be great. All right, so uh, Hannah, welcome. Jerry from Congressman Jerry Nather's office. So it's been a tough week. So first, I just want to acknowledge the appalling Supreme Court decision that overturn Roe v. Wade and um, the right to abortion that millions of Americans have relied on for a half a century. So obviously the decision is a severe attack on women's rights and denies everyone the freedoms to make decisions about their own lives and bodies and their own health care. So Congressman Nather continues to commit to doing everything in his power as a chair of the House Judiciary Committee to protect abortion access for all. So if you have any questions about the, you know, what's the next steps, feel free to contact our office. I'll leave my information in the chat. Um, on Friday, Congress uh, passed the Bipartisan Safer, Safer Communities Act, which President Biden signed into law. This law is a historic first step towards ending the epidemic of gun violence in the nation. So the law itself expands the background check system for prospective gun buyers under 21. It provides new protections for domestic violence victims by closing the so-called boyfriend loophole. And it provides millions of dollars to help states implement and run crisis intervention programs such as uh, red flag program. So um, the law incorporates the Protecting Our Kids Act that Congressman Nadler introduced and passed in the House. But obviously, this is the first of many necessary steps. This is, it can't be the last step. We need to do far more to combat gun violence and making our community safer. So, you know, Congressman Nadler commits to working upon that issue as well. Uh, locally, the House passed this year's Water Resources Development Act. So among the various projects, Congressman Nather worked to secure a feasibility study to improve the Hudson River's estuary ecosystem, and also the um, he, he um, uh, advocated the expedited completion of the New Jersey Harbor Channel's deepening improvements project to provide superior ocean access to accommodate the demand for international cargo through our region. Uh, lastly, um, at a local matter, Congressman Nadler led the New York City delegation in sending a letter to HHS Secretary Becerra and CDC Director Walensky expressing their grave concern regarding the limited access to monkeypox testing and vaccines amid the rapidly increasing cases of monkeypox, especially here in New York. So the letter uh, calls for the need to scale up testing capacity and the need to take additional steps to secure additional monkeypox vaccine supplies to protect uh, the growing number of people who've been recently exposed and uh, proactively protect high risk individuals. Um, I'd be remiss to not use my last 30 seconds to um, just wish Diana a, a, a you know, just a, first of all, gratitude for um, how wonderful of a community partner she's been to me through my four years and working with her. Um, it's just, just truly an honor to meet someone with that expertise and so willing to share and really get um, or share the information and allow. Um, representatives like myself to fully understand issues, the local issues. So just as a very grateful um, person, uh, I just want to let everyone know how much I will miss her um, and how thankful I am to be in her company. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you, Hannah. Hannah, please join us for tomorrow evening if you are local. Yeah, just send me the information. I'm, I'm happy to come. Awesome. I'd be happy to do so. Um, I can't even get started on that. Okay, uh, Theo from Assembly Member News Office, welcome. Theo, you can unmute now. Office of New York State Assembly Member Yulee New, and I have a couple of updates to share with you all tonight. Uh, first of all, since we last met, the legislative session in Albany ended, and as you might expect, there's a lot of bills that happened in those last moments. Of local significance, I have a couple of things to point out. One is a bill that we were able to get past extending the window for first responders to the 9 11 tragedies to apply for workers' compensation. Uh, so that has been extended another several years for anyone who might need that. Additionally, on the local level, there were two bills regarding Battery Park City, one which would expand the board of directors and require that more residents, a majority residents, be on the board of directors, and another which would uh, expand Screedry. Uh, ski and D different housing subsidies, which for complicated loophole reasons have not been extended previously to Battery Park City residents will be should this bill be signed into law. Uh, we hope that both these bills will be signed in. Uh, we encourage any of you who might be Battery Park City residents to feel free to 
write a letter to the governor. There's an online form you can fill out just to make sure that that, that stays on our radar and that those get signed quickly. Other things that happened towards the end of the legislative session. One is uh, we knew what was coming with Roe v. Wade due to the draft leak. So the assembly passed and the Senate rather. Both houses passed and the governor signed several bills, both protecting the right to re reproductive health care in New York uh, for all residents, but also making sure that our authorities will not collaborate with any out of state agencies who are trying to prosecute or investigate any reproductive health care activities that may happen in New York. Um, the assembly and Senate also passed several gun control laws following the Supreme Court case, which overturned one of New York's uh, most preeminent gun control laws. There is going to be an emergency session of the state legislature, which has been called for later this week to pass new legislation to make sure that we can sort of skirt around that Supreme Court ruling and keep our state as safe as possible. On the community front, uh, we've been busy this last month. So last month was AAPI Heritage Month. Uh, after our community board meeting, then we held a, an event for the whole community. Um, and additionally, we've we've been around at several different rallies and press conferences and the like. Those are, I'm sorry, I'm scrolling out of order for my notes here, so it's all getting garbled, but I believe that is all I have for you today, other than to briefly mention, uh, I met with uh, a group put together by Rosa the other day, along with Cindy, a FIDI resident. Uh, Senator Kavanaugh was there as well to discuss uh, street safety and things like that in the district. What I'll say the most important takeaway is if you have any incident that makes you feel unsafe, even if it's something where you didn't call 911 in the moment or you didn't need 911 in the moment, you removed yourself, please report it to 311 because that way we have a record and having that record and having that log is very important when we're trying to advocate for getting all the resources and attention we need for the community. Thank you all very much and I'm available for any questions. Okay. I don't see any hands up. Board members, any questions or hands? I will, um, seeing none, I'm just going to ask that uh, the bills that have not been signed for the governor, if you can be in touch and let us know. Um, yes, obviously writing to the governor's office, asking them to be signed, but also um, any updates that you receive, if you can let us know right away. And with that, let's move on. I see uh, Senator Kavanaugh is with us. Senator, welcome. Thank you. My sound okay. Great. Um, good. So uh, it's great to be here. Um, I just let me start by if you haven't, I assume somebody said this already, but it is primary day. Um, I am not a candidate on the ballot today, but uh, please, if you have not voted, you've got uh, you know an hour and forty-four minutes left uh, to cast your ballot. Um, and there are primaries in both parties uh, on the ballot today. Um, uh, just, you know, I, I, I know uh, that uh, you just heard about a few of the uh, legislative issues. The legislative session uh, has adjourned since the last time we met. Um, the uh, We are actively in touch with the governor's office on the Battery Park City bill, which, uh, you know, we passed in Senate. And we were glad to see uh, the assembly was able to join us on. Um, and uh, we also passed a bill of uh, local interest uh, expanding uh, Scree and Dree uh, to uh, former Mitchell Lama developments, including places like IPN. That is also awaiting the governor's signature and Deborah Glick. And I've worked on that for a long time and uh, we're happy to see that um, moving forward. Uh, and I, I, again, we're, we're actively lobbying the governor's office to sign it uh, soon. We did pass a sort of a rider to that bill that says that uh, the rent uh, that would be frozen is the May 2022 rent, even if somebody applies later in the year, as long as they apply within six months of the effective date of the bill. So it's not, people aren't losing opportunity as the, as the clock ticks on that, but we do want to, we do want to get signed so, so those benefits can be extended. Um, as was mentioned, we passed a bill partly inspired by uh, some resolutions that have been passed by this board about Battery Park City. Uh, in addition to the bill, uh, it expands the board to nine members and requires uh, a resident majority. Uh, we also passed a bill that expands Screedery and She and D um, to residents of Battery Park City and uh, directs the BPCA to extend the master ground lease, uh, which is sort of the basis for the status of the whole complex by 50 years. Um, 
to 2119. Uh, and uh, I will note that we also had a proposal that would freeze, uh, effectively freeze the ground rent for people making up to 150% of the area median income, which is about $200,000 for a family for it is indexed based on family size. Um, that uh, there was some expressed concern by, I think some folks on this board and also by local residents about doing that. Uh, so we have postponed doing that, but I do think that that is something that uh, would be very useful to residents. I mean, it freezes the ground, their, the portion of their ground rent and provides a rebate. Um, so that is something that I want to continue to have a conversation with all of you about, and I think hopefully get uh, legislated in the near future. Um, we also, uh, just on the gun package, um, we're, we're very active. I, it's one of my core issues, and I've you know, been very involved in the package that we passed a few weeks ago after uh, the, the Buffalo and Evalde shootings, um, and I am confident that we are going to uh, take steps this Thursday that will um, kind of that will strengthen our laws. The, the effect of the Supreme Court ruling is that uh, we cannot be so restrictive and especially so subjective about gun permits. There are very few gun permits uh, that are in the hands of anybody but law enforcement or former law enforcement in New York City, about 2,500 state citywide is my understanding. Uh, we will expect to see more, uh, but we believe that we have the ability to require uh, training uh, and uh, you know background checks and other things that will try to ensure that we minimize the extent to which people who are not uh, prepared to handle a gun responsibly um, will, will get a permit. Uh, we're also looking to restrict uh, what is called um, sensitive areas. And we're trying to define what that means, places that even if you have a permit, you can't carry a gun. Uh, and you know, we're always looking for ways to strengthen our laws, including the sort of underlying background check system. So um, it's been a long road. New York does already have some of the strongest gun laws in the country and one of the lowest relate, rates of gun related death. Uh, the Supreme Court, in, you know, in my view, has gotten, the, has gotten this issue wrong uh, now for a couple of years. But obviously, we will do what we can to stay within uh, the Constitution as interpreted by the Supreme Court, but also get robust, robust protections for folks. Um, we also passed this bill, and the governor has now signed the bill to, uh, per, per, to uh, facilitate conversion of hotels to permanent housing. Uh, this both will expand the range of hotels that can be converted without zoning changes. Uh, I don't think that will affect CB1 as much as maybe some of the M1 zones in Brooklyn and Queens. Uh, but it will allow lots more hotels to be converted. And the city estimates that uh, the, the flexibility that the bill provides might make it about 30% cheaper. And these would be uh, for affordable housing, conversions for affordable housing. So we're hoping that, uh, you know, some robust effort gets done now to uh, actually make those conversions. Um, disappointed we didn't pass the um, All Electric Buildings Act or Good Cause Eviction or some other things that we'll continue fighting for. But overall, it was a very productive session um, in housing and in other areas of housing being, of course, the committee I chair and in other areas as well. Um, I, uh, you know, we also, as has been mentioned, already took very uh, strong steps in anticipation of the uh, decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Um, you know, the leaked opinion put us on notice of what was coming and we have now passed a strong set of laws. We are still looking at additional ways we can protect uh, people. Uh, in New York, uh, in in light of that decision, but that's um, you know that's going to be I think an ongoing effort nationally as well as uh, in New York, um, and uh, just uh, you know on the, on the community side, uh, you know it's nice to be out in the warm weather. We're trying to do a lot more uh, community events and also see more folk, more of you in person, uh, which is great. Um, we uh, you know joined uh, Councilmember Marte and. Uh, Borough President Levine and CB1 in sponsoring this town hall to discuss the South Bradley Park resiliency plans. Um, and, you know, I, I believe there's already been, you know, a great deal of engagement partly led by the work of this board. Uh, but obviously there are more people hearing about it and we're getting more input and we're encouraging Battery Park City Authority to take that input seriously. And, uh, but I also am committed to making sure we move forward uh, with some resilience, you know, with the important uh, resiliency protections there. Um, on 250 Water Street, uh, you know, that project has been moving forward. Uh, we met uh, once again on June 9th, where, uh, 
the um, we've had an ongoing conversation about impacts on the community. Um, we've moved from primarily focusing on the uh, environmental concerns, which is still a big concern, but also now uh, the noise uh, issues that have arisen as they've moved to the early foundation work. Um, and again, that will be an ongoing uh, project. All the elected officials and this community board have been very uh, involved in that and obviously a wide range of stakeholders as well. Um, we did, as I mentioned, have a, at, at the request of some local residents, including Rosa, have a meeting of, uh, uh, about street safety uh, in FIDI. Um, we've gotten some complaints directly, but it was uh, enlightening to hear people's perspective on, you know, more people feeling, you know, that I think there's still a relatively little foot traffic throughout a lot of our neighborhoods. Um, and I think that, you know, people feeling unsafe is real. Um, as always, I am committed to working closely with all parties, including the police department, to make sure they're being respectful of our communities, but also being responsive and have the resources they need. So we are going to be talking with the precinct about, um, you know, the resources at their disposal and seeing if we, um, you know, can can help uh, facilitate a greater response to local safety concerns. I also would note that um, it's a little more than a month away, but National Night Out is coming around on August 2nd. So hope I'll see all of you there. Uh, I usually try to get to 11 of my police uh, precincts and uh, service areas uh, on that night, but I, I always you know, like to see all of you at the, uh, the, the first precinct. Um, lastly, I just want to take a moment uh, to recognize uh, Diana, the uh, great land use director, and thank you for her 10 years of service to this board. I don't need to tell any of you uh, how, how, you know, what an important person she's been. And our office really has had worked very close with her on a bunch of issues. So, you know, thank you so much. Um, and, uh, you know, if we were in person, we would be presenting something formal, but we will be, uh, we, we, we will be trying to do that as well. Uh, but, and we wish, you know, we wish her all the success um, at her next uh, gig as well. But uh, with that, I'm happy to take questions if you have time or move on if whatever you want to do. And I, I'm, I'm admiring all of your skill with emojis, with celebratory emojis, which I have no capacity to do on, on WebEx, but I'm glad all of you do. Uh, there's a little smiley face with a plus that's on the bottom. If you see it, that's where they are. Um, oh, I do see it. Okay. There you go. All I right. always learn something at a CB1 meeting. So I'm um, looking for hands up. I don't see any. I will remind everyone on this call and all of our electeds, the first precinct community council meets at the end of the month um they have two different working groups one of them is the community council that they take incoming and can give stats and information out it's highly critical that anybody who is concerned about safety go directly to the nypd and try and work with them um yeah. and this they, thursday at 6 p.m right is that yeah all right all righty so with that, Brian, thank you so much. Um, thank you all. If, if you can join us Wednesday, if you're in town, that's great. We'll be having uh, raising a glass in Diana's honor. No business to be discussed. Only, <laughs> only raising glasses. I like I like that rule. I will I will try my best to be there. Okay, thank great, you. great. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, and that puts me to I believe our esteemed borough president. Lucian, is the borough president signed on? So I'm looking now. I'm not seeing the borough president at this moment. No. Mr. Chang, Andrew, would you mind giving us uh, an update when he might be joining? You have to unmute Andrew. He's over. Yep. Andrew, you got you can uh, unmute. Let me let me um. Let me check and get back to you, Tammy. Uh, okay. So he's going later tonight. You, uh, let me get back to you. Sounds good. Okay, so let's move along then. Um, and close out. I don't see any of our other representatives. If I am incorrect, and you are here, please stick a hand up or unmute yourself. Oh, Connor. Hello, Connor Allerton has his hand up. Let's unmute Connor. Hi, Connor. Welcome. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I'm here to just give a few updates from our end. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I'll just get started. There's um, first, in no, in no particular order, uh, 
uh, our office has been working closely with the Fulton stall market, um, advocating for them and to ensure that they're uh, allocated the space and resources they need to thrive um, as a public and affordable local market in the seaport. And we've been working with them and EDC uh, to find the best scenario. Um, and in the meantime, we've ensured that they uh, will remain at their temporary location at 91 South Street until we find them a better and more permanent location. So that's ongoing and I hope to give a more permanent update soon um, as to uh, those negotiations. Um, in terms of the jail, uh, we wrote two letters recently, uh, one to the mayor proposing that uh, the alternative, uh, using uh, the Manhattan Detention Complex South Tower as an alternative uh, for the women currently held on Rikers Island. Um, I'm happy to, if anyone, you know, it's it's a, there's a lot of context there. Um, I'm happy to talk to anyone about that and share those letters if anyone wants to reach out directly to me. The second letter is also in regards to the same topic, but requesting that the comptroller conduct a feasibility study um, uh, of, of that relocation. And we've been following up and expect formal responses short uh, soon. And we'll also be able to follow up with an update on that. Um, in terms of uh, 250 Water Street, we wrote two letters, uh, one to the New York City Department of Environmental Protection regarding noise mitigation, and the other to the New York City Department, I mean, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation um, about air pollution mitigation and the potential for covering the site. Uh, we're coordinating with those offices um, and with follow-up and uh, hope to see what we can accomplish soon and, and have an update as well there um, on further, further mitigations for both noise and air pollution. Um, in terms of the, you know, the Battery Park City Resiliency Town Hall, um, you know, we held this town hall as was previously uh, spoken to uh, regarding the resiliency plan for Wagner Park. Uh, there are a lot of concerns, as everyone knows, um, about the current plan to, to tear down the park. So we want to thank everyone who attended um, and asked questions um, as we continue to hold the uh, Battery Park City Authority accountable during the process. Uh, we'll be following up soon on any questions that were raised that have not yet been addressed. And again, please feel free to reach out to our office with any follow up questions or concerns. Um, the uh, as was also mentioned previously, um, the LPC recently heard an application for 60 Wall Street, um, and our office testified in agreement with the Community Board 1 resolution against the application to alter the base and atrium of 60 Wall Street. Um, it would have severely diminished the architectural significance of the building and failed uh, to meet the harmonious relationship requirement as it relates to 55 Wall Street across the street. Um, and then just to touch on um, legislation uh, this last month, um, some relevant legislation includes um, what we prime sponsored in uh, intro 438, requiring simultaneous translation in three in the three most common languages for affected populations for public meetings uh, that have an expected attendance of more than 65 members of the public. Uh, and I think that this is especially important off the heels of uh, the Soho rezoning and the jail, jail hearings and a lot of uh, public hearings that we've uh, been a part of recently that have had these kinds of translation issues. Um, so we really hope to see this take effect soon and address, um, you know, make these make these public meetings more accessible to those speaking different languages and really uh, make sure that these processes are as transparent as possible. Um, we also co-primed intro 551 prohibiting non-essential helicopters from operating at heliports owned by uh, or operated by the city. So I think that that is particularly relevant to community board one. Um, and um, I think those are my updates for now. I'll also say congratulations to Diana. Um, I know I just got here, <laughs> but from one land use director to another, congratulations. Um, You'll be missed by everyone, clearly. Um, uh, you've done a great job uh, over the last 10 years. So uh, looking forward to your next steps in your career. Thank you. OK, hands up. Any questions for Connor at this time? Yeah, I'm kind of on the unhappy face, too. Whoever just put that one up. I'm just going to be sad face. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Connor. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Again, if you are available and you're in the neighborhood, um, because it is our neighborhood, come join us uh, tomorrow. Be in touch with the office. We'd All love right. to see you. No business, just celebrate. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, thank you. And with okay. that, um, I believe Connor is our last public, uh, uh, our last community liaison for our elected officials. Mark Levine will be joining us as Andrew Chang said a little bit later. He's uh, community board hopping, so he's got quite a few to go to. Uh, and with that note, since we know he will be coming back, let's start the business session and get rolling at 7.33 p.m. Can you please uh, put up the agenda? Okay. Awesome. Lucian, take it away. Thanks, Tammy. Hi, everyone. I'm Lucian Reynolds. I'm the district manager of Manhattan Community Board 1. This is my DM report for the month of June. This month, I led a walkthrough of the Manhattan Detention Complex uh, uh, site, or at least the area around the site, with members of the community as well as CB1 members. We documented issues of concern and sent them to DDC so they could respond. I also met with John Albert from DCTV, and he showed me points of concern with his building. So we'll make sure to keep tracking those. This month, I interviewed one potential candidate to serve as our discretionary actions consultant and then sent them along to the personnel committee uh, where they had a chat. Um, I also interviewed uh, just today three potential interns uh, who uh, will be supporting the work of our board this summer. So we have some fun, some fun work for them uh, as well as uh, seeing how they can fill in. Uh, we are in the process of transitioning the responsibilities of Diana. Our, uh, our departing director of planning and land use. Uh, so we've taken the opportunity to meet with a number of points of contact across multiple city agencies that I will look to work with over the coming months. The month of July will be challenging for CB1 staff, which will be just Lucy and I. Um, so please everyone be patient as it may take a bit more time to turn things around. Feel free to send me multiple emails if necessary. Um, it never hurts uh, to keep uh, uh, reminding me, uh, but the, the stuff does pile up. Um, we're hoping to get a discretionary actions consultant on board soon that we can train and, and get working. Um, we will also be putting up a posting for Diana's position uh, this, as soon as this week. Once it is live, I'll make sure to send it around to all the members in case you know of a good candidate that you can send our way. Um, and with that, Tammy, my report is closed and I pass it on to you. Thank you very much. Um, I did not particularly do slides this month on purpose. Diana is my always send my slides, send my slides, send my slides. She did not ask me for slides this month and I decided since it is election day and we are trying to move along, I'm gonna go br super, super, super brief. And we usually just show a lovely picture of the building. Um, our goal we have not heard yet is to be back in hybrid form to be able to see all of your smiling faces to know when you walk in the room, walk out the room, but we are still virtual for now. As of right now, that goes through July 14th. If you do not hear anything to the otherwise, then all meetings beyond July 15th will be hybrid in person. If you would like to remain online, keep in mind that um, we still need to have quorum in the room for every committee meeting and for full board. Um, it has been a very, very busy month with lots of board meetings from the Hudson River Park Trust, the Battery Conservancy and the Downtown Alliance. It is nice to see Lower Manhattan on the rebound. As you have seen, tourism is up and um, lots of people out and about. Uh, numbers are stable and holding on COVID. And with that, I'm going to say the most important thing that knocked me off my chair this month was Diana. So I am sad to see her leave. There is not one thing that I can say that doesn't make me sad about Diana leaving. And more than anything, I think you only know sadness when you've known joy. And we have had 11 years of Diana. I knew her when she, when I first got on this board and she started as a part-time person. So for that and for your years of service, Diana, I specifically did not irritate the crap out of you with my slides this month. So with that, I close my chair report. I hope to see you all tomorrow. Again, it's casual. If you don't know where you're going, contact the office. And Diana, if you wonder if you've left a mark, you've left a mark on all of us. So thank you, Tammy.
and let's hit it. Let's get the committees going. Yes, that's me next. Okay, so we have uh, elections as we do every two years. We have five officers to be elected. Uh, chair, vice chair, secretary, assistant secretary and treasurer. And as you know, and as you can see on the slide here, uh, the positions for chair, vice chair, secretary and assistant secretary are uncontested. Tammy for chair, Alice for vice chair, Mimi for secretary and Colin for assistant secretary. So I would ask the secretary to cast a vote for these positions that are unopposed unless the secretary disagrees. I guess that's me and my vote is so cast. Okay, congratulations you four. You've now been re uh, been elected, elected and or reelected depending upon the office. Now we will have one contested position for treasurer, Mariama James and Bernard Lynn. Um, you each have three minutes to give a, a statement uh, and or answer uh, questions. Uh, and so I'm simply gonna go in the order that you are listed here, Mariama, if you are available at your polling place location to uh, lead off, that would be great. I'm here, Jeff, thank you. So um, I'm Mariama, as Jeff mentioned, I'm currently working at, at a polls um, I back in 2020 when the country, all over the country, but particularly New York State, um, which was suffering the most with, with COVID, was po closing poll sites. And I just felt like I had to volunteer um, since I was able bodied uh, to, to do what I could so that sites wouldn't be, um, people would not be disenfranchised and unable to vote. And I specifically asked to be placed in a community of color because those seem to get. Uh, shut down first. And so I am here in LES and like the border of Chinatown and the Lower East Side um, volunteering for that. So, but I wanted to make sure that I called into the meeting, although the bylaws don't, didn't require me to in order to participate in the election in the event that anybody had any questions for me. Um, so as I expect all of you probably know, I am your current treasurer and um, I've worked with Tammy and the staff for the past two years, making sure that we had all of what we needed, some of what we wanted, and still ended up in the black um, at the end of the fiscal year, despite severe loss of revenue, not only through budget cuts, but through the fact that we were unable to have street fairs, which is from where we um, earn our funds. With the pandemic, all street fairs were off, and so it was really a matter of having to, you know, manage the money and truly balance uh, the budget over the past two years. And I was successful at doing that. And we still had everything that we needed, like I said, and, and, and some of the things that we wanted that we didn't necessarily need. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'd like to do it again. <laughs> if anybody has any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. I don't see any hands up. Okay, thank you, Mariam. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. So, Bernard, you're next. Hi, my name's Bernard Lind. Um, I'm new to the uh, to the community board, and so I saw this uh, election coming up, and uh, I have past experience in the uh, Lonnie Lodge scale project. And I'm also uh, serve as a uh, CFO of my, my own company. So I just thought that, you know, maybe I will be able to do, uh, understand the operation of the community board better. And that's where I was uh, make some contribution. Any, any question, uh, please let me know. I don't see any hands. So thank you, uh, Bernard and now, I guess I will ask Lucian uh, to explain how the balloting is going to take place. Thank you, Jeff. So I just like uh, everyone or, you know, er, most everyone saw with the um, test ballot, uh, you will all be receiving a ballot in your inboxes. As soon as I click on the start voting button over here on my end, um, 
it will be from a, a, a company called OPA Vote. That's O P A Vote. Um, you'll see that there's a selection between the two candidates. Um, they randomize each time uh, which candidate is listed first and which candidate is listed second. So what you see is not necessarily what other people see. So everyone will have their own credentials. Um, please uh, log in, uh, uh, make your selection. I have a, uh, a heads up display that lets me know um, how the voting is going. I don't know uh, who voted for what until the election is closed. We do keep a record of it. I don't want anyone to be surprised, but we do keep a record of, of, of voting. Um, that's important because we, you know, we, we make sure that the um, results can be uh, viewed so people know if they voted for someone that that vote has been preserved in that way and that we're uh, transparent, uh, but that does not happen until uh, those are not viewable until later. Um, of course, the nominating committee, uh, if they have any uh, uh, concern, they can see that immediately, but um, I will pass the results directly to Jeff. Um, and he can uh, present the, the winner of the election. I believe Tammy said, or someone said that um, before that we could keep this open for an hour. That should be enough time for everyone to vote. If you have an issue, please email me um, and I will see what I can do. Uh, check your spam filter if you don't see anything in the next five minutes. And with that, I will uh, send this out to all the members of CB1. Thank you, Lucian. So um, I see we have uh, Mark has his hand up. So go ahead, Mark. I have a question. So when we did this without the video, without uh, Zoom, uh, the candidates were allowed to ask for um, a person to observe uh, the counting of the votes. Uh, not that maybe they don't want to do it this time, but if that was the case. It's and it's in the I believe it's in the bylaws. I might want to check me on that, but I think it is. They could ask uh, someone to observe counting of the ballots. How would that work with this if so requested? In terms of the bylaws, um, I, I'm I'm looking at them right now. And I'm not 100 sure, but it's always been the tradition that someone can do that if it's not in the bylaws. Yeah, I, I, I can't speak to whatever the tradition uh, might have been, but uh, the bylaws uh, require that tabulation nominally by the nominating committee under the observation of a uh, staff member. I believe also, I don't recall whether it's in the bylaws, maybe in the next paragraph that I'm not reading right now. I'm not um, sure. um, but certainly traditionally the um, uh, auditing of of uh, you know, the, the ability to review the results, I think, is open to all of the community board members. Lucian or Tammy, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. That is correct. The public yeah, right. votes are always public. They will, they remain in the office. There is no tallying with OPA vote, Mark. You may only. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I, I was just curious uh, if that was requested, how it would work. We don't have to. We don't have to stay on this point anymore. But sure. I will tell you it, I'll only add that there's a the the board passed uh, special bylaws uh, changes for electronic voting. So when it is in person, uh, if there's a, a an in person vote, a vote that's purely in person with no electronic voting, then the the old rules I believe would default. But uh, if electronic voting is used, then the automatic okay. tabulation takes takes uh, command. I, I believe in this case. Uh, I, and that's a good clarifying point because when I said that I was looking at the bylaws, I was looking at the old bylaws, not the ones that were just uh, uh, modified. I think at the last meeting. All right, thank you. Okay, seeing no more questions, uh, we all have uh, roughly an hour uh, to vote. So check your emails. And we will please check your emails if you do not, um, as Jeff said, if you for some reason don't get it from Opa Vote. Please reach out to the office and the office will uh, try and problem solve for you because we are interested in every voice being heard. Thank you, Jeff. Thank Tammy, you. Should we have already seen it in our email so far or not yet? Nope. Uh, they push the, they push the button shortly. I haven't seen it. Much yeah. yet. Okay. It, it, Thank it you, hasn't Tammy. been Thank delivered you. yet. Thank you. All right. So I'm just said I couldn't do my to, to, to queue up and, and get them all out of the, uh, the outbox on, on their end. So just keep your eyes out. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll pipe in when I see uh, that it, uh, they've been delivered. 
mine just arrived. So if that gives anybody, it comes from OPA voting, OPA vote voting link. Mine just arrived as well. Okay. All right. So they're starting to flood in. Let's move on. If that's okay, Jeff, um, we'll come back to you when we're ready for the balance. All right, let's hit the next committee back to the agenda, please. Executive committee. We, um, I hope everyone has read the proposal from council member Marte. Um, that was circulated um, and the safe alternative. Does anyone have questions on the resolution? I believe Connor is still here. Um, so he can answer questions and um, I. Alice, you're first. I just wanted to give a friendly amendment that <clears throat> I, I suggested we had. I had mentioned at the committee, Bill and Corey Sharples of shop architects and I quoted from them about their belief in the importance of the and possibility of retrofitting the South tower. But I also wanted to include, um, and that was a miss uh, when I spoke up the other night, Peter Sampton, who was the partner from Grusen Sampton, who in yeah. fact was responsible for the renovation. So just to say, whereas one addition, uh, respected architects, including Bill and Corey Sharples of Shop Architects and Peter Sampton of former Grusen Sampton Partners, responsible for the 1983, quote, state of the art renovation of the South Tower, endorsed reusing the South Tower for significant reasons, including cost and the many environmental and quality of life benefits and. I have no problems accepting that friendly resolution. Thank you. Uh, friendly thing, thank you so much. Please, uh, we will take it off the recording, but if you already have a copy of what's printed, um, please put that in so the board can add, the board office can add it. Sure. Uh, Rosa Chang, you are next. Um, actually, I think Alice's comments were integrated into the resolution that I read right after the shop one. Can you put acknowledge that the, 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 the second, whereas had Peter Sampton mentioned, but the quote, the, the, the introduction oh. to who he was, was not included in the previous whereas unless I unless I didn't read it correctly um, uh, I'm afraid I don't have it pulled up but okay if it's there then it doesn't have no to no you're right I mean he's he's mentioned but it says specifically Mr. Sampton wrote in a letter the right. mayor so, your, right. okay right so before that we should introduce who he is that that was sweet I mean, gotcha. that, yeah okay thanks Alice, we can definitely add that um, next time I think what we can also do is asterisk and denote him in the bottom who he is um, as like, you know, a bibliography source. All righty. With no other hands up, I'd like to call the question. Do I have a second? Second. Fantastic. Uh, we don't need to do roll call because we've already done roll call. If you miss roll call or your camera was off during roll call and you couldn't have it, your camera is on now. You must be the one to unmute yourself and say last name here and your vote. So, without that, Mimi, I'm going to call for yeas, nays, abstentions, and recusals. You ready? Yes. You're doing it, not me. I'll do this one. Cool. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to assume everyone is in favor. Are there any noes? Okay. Hearing no noes, are there any abstentions? Hearing no abstentions, are there any recusals? That is a recusal. Thank you, Kathy. Tammy, I don't believe I, I wasn't here for roll call. This is Forsberg. I'm here. Thank you, Forsberg. You are here. And Copel is here. Thank you, Joel. Uh, Amoruso is a yes, but uh, unless you want to count me when I couldn't log in in communicating with you. Got to have the cameras on, um, but yeah. So if your cameras are on, then your votes are counted. That is the way the new law works. Alrighty. So with that note on here, I hear no others. Uh, the vote closes, and we are good to go. Let's move on to the next one. Susan Cole, Personnel Committee. 
Oh, Susan, before you go, I just want to remark. I know that some people may need to step away from the camera. You need to tell the office or announce, unmute yourself and say something like, Meltzer stepping away. Much as if we were in the room where you walk out and you come back. And please note that if you're gone from 15 to 20 minutes, then you are considered having left the meeting. So it really is for like a step away for a moment and come back. Like when we are in person. Can we just enter the chat to the no, host? It has to, nope, it has to be said for the public record. We asked all of those questions. It has to be said. Here, we announce it or the member has to announce it. Correct. So with that, I pass this to Susan Gold for personnel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, as you, uh, as Lucian said, we did an interview a ca candidate for the uh, discretionary actions consultant. And if you ask me what that is, it's a um, our gal or guy Friday. That's how I view it. Uh, they will be doing a number of things. We have one person. We um, made no decision, but we we are asking for writing samples, and uh, we are reviewing in the process of reviewing the urban planner job posting and that's really where we are um, uh, with personnel we're moving forward we are going to be uh, short staffed everybody so uh, as Tammy and everyone said we've got to take it a little easy thank God it's summer uh, anyway that's it does anybody have any questions for Susan and I, oh, one other thing, if anybody has an idea uh, or know someone who they think should apply for Diana's position, please, uh, uh, please inform them, you know, that it's open and they should uh, uh, send a resume uh, to the office. Right, Tammy? Absolutely. And trust me, we're, we understand there may not be be people who are at Diana's level, but when Diana joined us 11 years ago, she wasn't the Diana we have today. So it was pretty good, though. Let's let's call it like it is. She was fabulous. Yeah. Yes. So there. Ready. Well, thank you, Susan, for personnel. Let's move on, please. Next committee. Mine. Awesome. Licensing. Take it away. So, uh, um, all the um, licensing. I hope you've read them. Uh, we had a little trouble in getting them as specific as I would like, but we, Lucian and I tried to clean up a bunch. The Tribeca and the financial um, uh, all seemed to be fine. We could take them as one vote uh, unless anybody has a question um, uh, or a concern, and we can get through that. So there are three on Tribeca and three on uh, financial before we go to the Civic Center one. So, can I um, have someone uh, call the question? Oh, thank you. Question. And a second, please. Second. Second. So, um, I'm going to, uh, I'll do it. Uh, any no's? Any recusals? Any abstentions? Okay, they pass. Thank you. So, and just, let's just make sure Mimi and Colin have the vote right, right? So that was for all of FIDI. The, the, the Tribeca and the FIDI, three in each. Thank you for doing that. My pleasure. Let's move on with the slide to make sure we're on the right slide because that can, was FIDI. Can you, can you give me the, the numbers? They don't have, we don't have them listed as Tribeca and FIDI. We have. Okay. There, well, I only have one, two, three, and one, two, three. I don't know how you got so, it. So can we go back one slide, Diana? Oh. Uh, financial. So 38 water. I'll do it, Lucian. Okay. I don't mind. 120 Water Street and 6 Stone Street, Mimi. That's the financial district. So, then, so we voted for 38, 120, and 6. Is that correct? Yes. And then we w voted in Tribeca for 87 Walker, 183 Duane, and 39 mm -hmm. Avenue of the Americas. Got it. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, so I'd like to say a few things. Uh, uh, 87 South Street uh, and 127 
uh, 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 John Street are not a problem either. Um, I just would like to state a couple of things for the record for 24 John Street so everybody understands it. If we reject outright uh, uh, an applicant, they have the right to go to the SLA without any of our stipulations. The community, I want to really say something about the community. We had a number of people who did speak against this resolution. We tried to incorporate as best as we could their concerns. So, and, and in all fairness, the applicant did sign all of our stipulations, limiting of hours and uh, security, a number of things if you read the resolution. If anybody wants to add anything, I'm certainly open, but I, I, uh, uh, although some people um, on the committee or are against it, and I understand that, um, I always like to remind everybody that if we uh, vote down a resolution, it's our problem as well as the applicant's problem. And in some ways, the applicant can be more successful than we can. Um, and it requires a great deal of work. Uh, usually the uh, SLA uh, supports all of these unless there's something really critical. Um, and uh, I am very respectful of the neighbors and what they said. Supposedly, the owner has uh, uh, stated that he will do things differently or the operator. And um, uh, we have put in the stipulations, as I said before. So I'm going to ask to take uh, um, uh, 24 John Street uh, to, to take 127 John Street and 87 South Street together, um, if we can. And I would like a, a, a call the question in a second, please. Call the question. question. Second. 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 All right. Thank you. All in favor? Oh, no, don't don't, don't do say that. anything. No, right? no, 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 no. Are there any uh, nays? Any abstentions? Uh, any um, and abstentions? What am I missing? Recusal. Recusal. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, if uh, there are none, I will assume it is pa these two have passed. All right. So sorry. let us. Go I'm so sorry. Just to confirm, 127 John, 87 South Street. These are grouped. Thank you, Colin. Yes. Good. Thank you. Uh, so let's go to 24 John Street. I want to take it separately, so I want to give everybody a chance. If there's any discussion on it, please speak up. If not, uh, um, we should call the question. Can we? Uh, let's see. I I see Patrick Cannell's hand up. Oh, yeah, Patrick. I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand up. That's okay. Sorry. I just started off. Laura's slipping off. Um, I'll be really brief. So um, I didn't, frankly, love this project when it came up and came around the first time uh, last year or so because of all the problems that um, were noted by the community in 2020. But um, the owners have really done, in my view, a, a pretty good job of reaching out to the community um, quite often. Uh, I received, I think, others on this community board did, too, a number of invitations. Unfortunately, I just, for whatever reason, couldn't make any of them work to go view the space. Uh, I know they were asking for ways to reach out to any of the other neighbors. They were looking for ways to collaborate with uh, neighbors. And um, in my capacity as a, a board member of my condo on John Street, um, I'd received a, a note from one of the uh, residents, I think a board member at 71 Nassau, who I believe spoke in the public session tonight. And I emailed that person. I never heard anything back. I gave that person's contact information to the folks at 24 John Street, and I understand they never heard anything back. So uh, to the extent that the community, the neighbors' complaints are that they weren't included in the conversation, um, I just think it should be noted that, indeed, um, this applicant, and as far as I can tell in my observation, really did try to reach out to folks, really did try to bring the community into a conversation. And as Susan has pointed out, has agreed to um, all the stipulations that the committees put forward, and that's a compromise. So I uh, just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, Pat. Uh, all right. Uh, do I have any other questions or raised hands? I 
actually don't see any, Susan. So I'm going to say with no other hands, Mr. Connell, take yours down and let's call the question. Okay, we need a second. Second. Okay, um, any recusals? Any um, uh, abstentions? Uh, I, I'd like to abstain on this because I don't feel I really, I'm a new member of, of the board. I live uh, right down the street from uh, this uh, location and I have heard some of the objections uh, uh, to this uh, establishment and I don't feel like I know enough one way or the other since I haven't been involved in the discussions up to now. So I'm going to abstain on this. Thank you very much. Uh, any other abstentions? Any nays? Amaruso is a no. Okay. Anybody else? Please remember if you are voting for those who have turned cameras off, you cannot be counted if your cameras are off. Um, my, ca my camera doesn't work. So unless Hulk is going to buy me a new laptop, that's the way it is. It doesn't okay. work. Uh, let's go. Uh, uh, so one uh, nay. Anybody else? Um, all I would will assume that all the others are yes. Sorry, point of information for the chair. If people's votes can't be counted, you, you gotta let me know about it. Well, Mark's can't be counted because we can't see his picture. Okay. And well, why am I here at the meeting then? If uh... not to debate this, I'm just trying to get the numbers right. Please. Mark Mark, we're all working through the new system. We're we're going back and forth every month with the borough president. And this is the best that I can tell you that I can manage at the moment. Um, don't don't go away. Let's just keep it as exactly. it is. Um, Joel Capel, Mitch Roman, you also need to have your cameras on. Um, um, so, um, okay. Okay, uh, Tommy. It passes. it passes. Thank Colin. you. Okay. Um, on that note, uh, thank you very much, Susan. And thank you for navigating. Thank you for everybody for the work on this. Uh, do you have any others or are we moving on? Uh, I have no others, but I would like to say that, um, uh, uh, and I want this on the record, that if there are problems, they must call 311, anybody who notices a problem on 24 John, and then report it to the community board with the number. I want to just be on record for that. That's right. Thank, Thank you. you, Susan. Um, can somebody move Megan out of the attendee section? I don't know if she's still there. I'm here. They they moved me. I also sent an email. Thanks, Tammy. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Susan. Again, three one one peeps. That's what we need to do. And then once they're filed, copy the community board on the number for follow up. So thank you very much, Pat Moore. And to follow up with what Susan said, if there are enough complaints about this establishment, they'll come before the Quality of Life Committee, and we will see what we can do. So, um, Mariama, are you on? No, okay. So I'm going to do the resolution because Mariama is not, uh, doesn't seem to be able to do it. In 2016, I think everybody's probably read the resolution. In 2016, we signed a resolution in support of the um, environmental health centers programs that are at several hospitals and uh, dealing with 9-11 illnesses. So they came back to us because they need to renew their programs and they need they wanted our support. There have been some changes which are included in the whereas. And unless there are any questions, can we just vote on it? Okay. I don't question. Second. Any recusals? Any nays? Any abstentions? So it passes. Mariama, if you can hear, it passes. Yay. So, honestly, thank you. The reports are uh, every other month we have DDC come and tell us about old projects, mainly infrastructure projects that are happening in the community. 
It's a little complicated, so I'm not going to go over them. If you really are interested, you can uh, contact me or you can listen to our YouTube or, you know, attend the meeting to hear about particular projects that might be affecting the area that you live in. The other project that comes before quality of life is the detention centers demolition project. Uh, basically, we, we are not discussing the merits of the project. They just come to report on what is going on in terms of demolition and for people who live or work in the area to come and report any issues. So one issue that came up is that many people are not happy with the quarterly reporting of the environmental um, monitors. So we asked them if they would please consider reporting on a daily basis what was going on in the with the environmental monitors. And I believe Alice is going to take that up in her committee, which is the environmental committee. Right, Alice? We already actually took it up and Tammy has a letter that would, you know, identify actually the daily camp monitoring. So, yeah, we, I think we have a resolution already. Thanks for okay. the review. Great. So, if anyone has any other issues with the detention complex, please come to our September meeting we, or contact Lucian and we will see. We are not going to have a meeting. Sorry for the noise outside. We're not going to have a meeting in July unless there's some urgent issue. And uh, so, we will not meet again until September, at which point DDC will come and we have asked the uh, companies that are involved in the agencies that are involved with the detention demolition to please come back in September. Andrea, I wanted to apologize to you. I didn't realize you were on our committee. I think you attended the meeting and I didn't welcome you. I think you're a new community board member. So welcome. <laughs> That's my report. Amy okay. uh, Corman here. I have to step away for a moment. Thank you. But no questions for me. Okay. Bye. All right, awesome. So thank you very much. Moving on, and thank you, Mr. Corman. That was perfectly done. So next committee, Justine Kucha. Justine, you have a short report, or is Kathy giving it? I think I'm giving it actually. Yes. Okay, fine. Jeff, welcome back. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, so the Battery Park City Committee uh, did not have resolutions uh, this month. Uh, as we do every month, we heard the security report and the general BPCA report um, from, um, uh, from Battery Park City Authority. Those reports are accompanied by uh, PDFs, uh, PowerPoint related PDFs, which I believe we post on our own site and are certainly available on Battery Park City Authority website, uh, letting us know everything that's going on uh, and will be going on um, in Battery Park City. We then walk through um, a portion of one of the bills that uh, Senator Kavanaugh referred to uh, uh, earlier in the in the public session. Uh, he he introduced um, two bills re related specifically to Battery Park City. Um, uh, one relating to represent residential representation on the board of the authority and the other relating to uh, various affordability issues uh, in Battery Park City. Um, versions of both of those bills have been passed by the Senate and the Assembly and are awaiting uh, Governor Hochul's signature, but a portion of the uh, affordability bill was uh, cut out and made as part of a separate bill um, as a result of some comments that the community, uh, including at the committee, uh, had made. And that, that part deals with the fundamentally with the ground rent of condominiums uh, in Battery Park City. And Senator Kavanaugh's uh, legislation uh, would freeze the ground rent uh, for tenants that satisfied an income test, 150% of AMI. Um, uh, we had a lot of questions uh, about uh, how that would work uh, mechanically, and some concerns were raised regarding the um, uh, the income testing. Um, uh, so we discussed that again at the at, at the meeting. I believe the Senate has passed that bill as well, uh, but I don't believe it has been passed in the Assembly, um, and it will be the continued source of discussion uh, in the committee in upcoming months. Um, and then finally, we discussed uh, quality of life impacts of the uh, upcoming uh, 
construction project for the South uh, Battery Park Resiliency Project. Um, it will be quite uh, disruptive. Uh, and so residents had an opportunity to give their concerns as well as have questions answered regarding the nature of the disruption. Um, and I would use this opportunity to point out that the North and West resiliency projects are in the beginning design uh, phases now. And so all of you who have an interest uh, in what those projects may look like, please participate in the design process, uh, including there is an open house tomorrow uh, regarding the North, uh, North and West Battery Park City projects. These, these, these are uh, potentially very disruptive projects in order to deal with uh, climate change. And so now is your time uh, to make sure that your input is heard. And that's my report. Thank you. I'll put an additional plug in for their sessions tomorrow. You go to the session, you'll opine about their North and West resiliency, which goes up into Tribeca, and then come and meet us at Fresh Salt. Perfect opportunities. Yes, I plan to do that. Exactly. So thank you, Jeff. You do need to sign up. I believe there's a registration link. We've shared it through the community board and we will share it out again. I just posted it in the chat, Tammy. Thank you. Timing is perfect, Alice, you're back. Okay, perfect. Thanks very much, Jeff, for highlighting that for tomorrow. I think it's at uh, two o'clock. And, and as I said, it's in the chat for the open house on the Northwest Battery Park resiliency. Um, we had an update uh, on 250 Water Street from our independent monitor, Laura Dodge. The working group, as our Senator mentioned, met on June 9th with full participation, which provided an excellent update on many fronts. And I wanna thank our Senator and the great work of our community liaison, Emily Lang, for helping set up these important meetings and for working with us to ensure we have these meetings now uh, calendared monthly um, in advance. Laura Dodge, uh, the CB1's independent consultant, provided an excellent and very detailed update on the recent findings discussed at the working group meeting, which are available on the CB1 EPC YouTube and on the CB1 website under external documents for, the, for those details. Laura summarized that all, being, all is being followed very closely now at the site with special attention given to all procedures concerning means and methods after a few missteps occurred earlier during the 421A related excavation. She noted that the recent excavations did not present any impacts of concern, noting that, and I quote more or less, we know that there's mercury at this site, but that it has not yet presented itself to a level indicative of adverse human health risk. Laura noted that the future remediation work at 250 Water Street is scheduled during a 10 work period, which when the neighborhood schools are closed, with everything being done to try to ensure that the work is completed before the school year begins. The next phase of excavation for the remediation work started today with the hours taking place from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. through this Friday, July 1st. During this time, probes in the concrete will occur to survey the conditions for the removal of the underground storage tank. Lastly, the archaeological monitor, Elizabeth Mead from AKRF, wrote up her findings noting that no archaeological artifacts were found during the 428 a tax foundation work, and we've asked that her updates be provided as part of the working group summaries going forward. The 250 Water Street construction hotline is uh, available to everyone and um, can be posted, but the number is 917-962-8166. We had a wonderful discussion at the committee which um, about uh, ideas for going, going forward for what the committee would look at and we really had some great ideas from a uh, review of the green amendment looking at our constitutional rights to clean water and air to the review of the mayor's soon to be released carbon zero text amendment suggestions for incoming agency invitations to include the department of sanitation to speak about community recycling and composting with quality of life dot to review how our streets can offer more to our neighborhoods for resiliency and refuse collection um, at, with the DOT open street amendment being completed and to invite the DOB back to discuss local law 97 
And we also discussed the idea of how to generally better educate ourselves, the public, and to best promote and spread the word about the city's environmental agenda and programs. And I particularly want to highlight Wendy's suggestion of a lemonade stand, which I thought was wonderful. Um, I also just want to take this opportunity to uh, say what an honor and a pleasure it has been to serve as vice chair of the board. I had prepared a little speech, but I'll spare you, only to say that I really um, have loved it and i'm delighted to serve again and i really want to give heartfelt thanks to our leader in arms here tammy and to diana who um, i will personally miss more than maybe anybody here and lucian lucy and in absentia james and jen and all the board members for their kind support and i really look forward to continuing to serve and uh, my ears are always open as is my mouth i'm afraid so i will close it now and i thank you all Alice, but I think that's what makes us great partners in working together is that dialogue back and forth and knowing that the door is always open. So if you call me, I'm here for the board and so are you. And that's really important. Um, Eric Flores has a question. Eric, go. I just want to know if I had to say I'm back. You do. And thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Mimi Flynn. I see your hand. Um, yeah, I'm going to be right back. Cool. Thank you. Mimi steps out of the room. Perfect. Uh, anybody else before we go? Uh, Paul Goldstein reports. Tammy, well, the board really president. Tammy. Oh, yeah, uh, Paul Goldstein, I'm sorry. We're going to have you um, wait just a moment. And we're going to welcome Borough President Mark Levine to Manhattan Community Board 1. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Yes, and, and Tammy, I just really quick. Um, Everyone's doing a great job voting. We are 8 people uh, who are, have left to vote. If you haven't voted yet, please do. The time is ticking. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucian. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's great to see all of you here at CB1. I uh, really enjoyed um, the presence of CB1 at a press conference we did today. Uh, you were well represented by Mimi Flynn. We were calling for the expansion of public bathrooms in New York City. We had a hearing today on legislation I'm pleased to be co-sponsoring with Rita Joseph, council member from Brooklyn, that would require that there be an additional public bathroom, at least one, installed in each zip code in New York City. And CP1 has been in the lead on this. Um, you've helped organize some of the other community boards um, in Manhattan uh, to be active on this. And I have to say the response has been overwhelming. We have already over 30 council members that have signed on as co-sponsors. Uh, the hearing today uh, was quite successful. Uh, the bottom line is we have far fewer public bathrooms per capita than most other cities in the world. We have one public bathroom for every 6,000 residents. And that places us as at 93rd in the United States among comparable cities. Obviously, it's unacceptable. Um, the legislation we put forward today explicitly gives a role for community boards uh, in citing decisions. And we wanted to do that because every zip code is different, every neighborhood is different, and there are various ways to do this. This can be uh, the kind of standalone structure that's installed uh, on a sidewalk, on a roadbed. It could be um, in a publicly, a privately owned public space, a POPs. Uh, could be in a park. There's different ways to do this. Um, I'm really grateful that CB1 has stepped up. Again, thanks to Mimi for uh, joining us today at the press conference. But your thoughts on 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 where you would like to see additional public bathrooms in CB1 are welcome. It's not too soon to start thinking that through uh, while we continue to advocate advocate for the broader legislation. Um, I do want to say a word on uh, a slightly more um, uh, sober topic of monkeypox, uh, which is uh, on the rise in New York City uh, at, at an increasing uh, rate. Uh, and uh, I want to give people the latest on where we're at on that. Um, it is uh, overwhelmingly now uh, within um, the LGBT community, specifically uh, among gay, bisexual, and men who have sex with men. Uh, although anyone can get it and anyone can spread it. Uh, we have been fighting to get access to vaccines for, uh, for monkeypox. Uh, we got 1,000 allocated to New York City last week. 
uh, they were um, all used up within two hours of of um, the clinic opening in Chelsea. Uh, obviously, we have a woefully inadequate supply. There is good news in the past hour. The federal government has announced uh, that they're going to send another 50,000 plus out to state and local uh, health departments. Uh, I'm going to be fighting for our share. Uh, we should have thousands more considering that we have more cases here identified than any other place in the country. I think you as, as a community board have a role, I think, in educating the public. Uh, we want people uh, to be attuned to the symptoms of this disease, uh, which include um, flu-like symptoms, um, swollen lymph, lymph nodes, and notably unusual uh, lesions. Uh, or rash on the skin, and you want people who have these symptoms to please uh, be aware and and check with your doctor and, and isolate uh, until you can get a test. Um, this is a, a it's an unpleasant disease. It means isolating for four weeks, um, and it can have some long term uh, repercussions. So we just want everyone uh, to please be cautious and uh, and to be aware of the symptoms. Um, uh, and I'll let you know as soon as we know about the uh, future availability of, of vaccination. Um, I, I, I do want to thank uh, Diana uh, Sweetow for your service on the board. I understand that you're heading out to, to uh, EDC, so we're going to miss your service here on CB1. We're glad that you can continue to serve us in your new role. Thank you so much for your service. Um, I think I'm going to pause there because it's a little late and a busy night for all of us. Uh, if there's time, for questions, Madam Chair, uh, happy to entertain. If there's not, also understand um, if you need to move on. So I'll pass it back to you. Okay. Thank you so much. I already had a hand up before you left. I had two. So um, without a doubt, we'll do some questions. It is really good. And my goal is to share some having CB1 represented by many of the people who have passionate projects. So I'm delighted um, that we could help roll the ball down to get things moving for public bathrooms. It will do a lot to help clean up the streets of New York yes. for both there's the workers and anybody who's here. So it would be an ideal thing. Um, Gerald is first and then Mimi is second. And uh, that's the only hands I see thus far. Thanks, Tammy. Uh, thank you, Borough President, um, for for the work you're doing um, with with public restrooms. That's that's wonderful. Uh, one question I had is: uh, has has there been any discussion citywide for uh, resources available for those with long COVID? Um, I know this is something that uh, is ongoing, but um, you know it is a it is a thing. Absolutely, Gerald. The estimates are uh, it's kind of shocking that uh, approximately 20% of people who experience COVID will have long-term symptoms. Uh, it, it is um, probably going to be the, the largest mass disability event in American history. And I think that CB1 with its experience uh, in, in the horrible impact of uh, the World Trade Center attack probably is gonna be well attuned to this. There are increasing resources available. Um, you know, we have a COVID hotline. It's 212 COVID 19. They now have an option set up, I believe it's number four, that uh, you can access uh, assistance uh, for um, long COVID treatment. Uh, our health and hospital systems have set up uh, centers of excellence uh, for long COVID treatment. Um, unfortunately, um, we don't have one at Bellevue. Uh, which I'm fighting for, but there are others around the system which you can be referred into. Um, and I don't know, some of you might know that that through my office we do uh, regular uh, Zoom uh, Q&As with health experts. Uh, we've done them throughout the pandemic and on various other topics. Um, we're going to be doing one on long COVID in the near future. I'll definitely let CB1 know about that. Uh, but we do need people to seek treatment. Um, science is gaining greater understanding of long COVID, um, and there are strategies which can help. So we want people to, to not be afraid to uh, contact the doctor and um, don't hesitate to use our hotline, again, 212 COVID-19, which can connect you directly to care in the health and hospital system. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. we're moving to Mimi and then Betty. 
Um, I really just wanted to say that I'm back now, back in the room. Uh, but also, um, yeah, I had a great day today at City Hall, Mr. Levine, and um, yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you for being there. You know, I have to say we had we had delivery workers uh, represented today. We had street vendors represented today. Uh, we had uh, people who were advocating uh, for the medical needs of women, who uh, people experiencing pregnancy and menstruation. Uh, this this is the issue that I think touches all of us, and um, it was great to have CB1 there today, and look forward to continuing to partner with you on it. Listen, we want it all the way through the goal line, so we're good, Betty. Yes, and thank you. Sorry to miss the discussion today because I, I had other things to do, but I did submit testimony, so I wanted you to know that about public Oh, comments. thank you, Betty. Appreciate yes. that. And I have a two-part question about monkeypox. One yes. I had read, this one would be for your validation of it's your understanding as well. I had seen through Bloomberg Public Health, uh, because I, I keep track with that, that there's actually a three-week incubation period between when you contract monkeypox and when you show symptoms. Is that your understanding or? Uh, I didn't think it was that long, but uh, this is a challenge and why we believe it's spreading far beyond the 55 cases that have been diagnosed. Unfortunately, to do a test, you must have an active sore. The way the testing is done, I don't, don't wanna get too graphic, but um, you're, you're essentially uh, taking your sample from a sore. So until you have symptoms, uh, the test that's being used uh, can't can't doesn't apply. Um, uh, this is uh, why vaccination is so important. And New York City uh, did a move that I applaud. They are offering vaccination uh, essentially prophylactically to mm. um, uh, men who have sex with men who have multiple partners over the past 14 days. That's their definition. Um, you know, it's actually an honor system. They're not. Um, interrogating you if you go into the clinic. Uh, I mean, they're, they're not even ask, asking any uh, questions like that. Um, but that's how they defined eligibility. Um, and, I, I, and that's welcome because of, of the fact mm -hmm. that it can be difficult to detect um, and we want people to be protected ahead of time. So uh, really our best defense here is gonna be vaccination. Uh, it is good news that the CDC announced tonight uh, large shipments, but we're waiting to hear just how much is coming to New York and when it will be available. Great, thanks, because the second part of my comment was going to be that the program, whatever it is in New York City, really look at people learning how to protect themselves because they have to be aware of the long incubation period. And I haven't heard a lot of talk about that so that people who might be at I, risk can at least protect themselves and avoid it or realize the importance I, I will, of vaccine. I will ping my friends in the health department on this exact point, Betty. Uh, appreciate you. you for raising it. Thank you. All righty. So with that, um, Borough President, there are lots of fantastic things that we'd like to roll out borough wide. So don't be a stranger, come visit us right. again. You and, got it. And we will see you in July. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Coming. Be well, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs> bye bye. All righty. So this may be a world record for us. We have two committees left. One report, one vote. It's eight thirty. Paul, take it away. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll give a quick report. Ranger Jim appeared at the committee and he reported on some activities. 500 plus attended at uh, the African burial ground for the Juneteenth celebration. Uh, they just concluded Shakespeare's downtown free open air staging of St. Joan at Castle Clinton. On July 4th, there will be a flag raising ceremony again at Battery Park, Castle Clinton, along with fire, uh, cannonball firing. And again, Castle Clinton, Fort J are open for the season, as is Federal Hall. Next, why don't we go to a slide, uh, a couple of slides I have for the Holland Tunnel Rotary issue. So Peter Ballman, uh, from that organization provided a very good report on plans to make the now closed space that you're looking at, which is the Holland Tunnel Rotary bounded by Beach, Lake, Hudson, and Varick Streets into a four and a half acre publicly accessible open space with a range of activities for the public. They are working with the Port Authority to get this done and the plan involves as you saw on that last slide, a bunch of ramps 
to allow the traffic to continue moving while the park is built below. And now uh, that's that slide. And the next slide basically shows some of the ideas they are looking into incorporate into this uh, performance space, park like space that would also have food service, a place that would connect the neighborhood with other programming ideas. Um, they formed an, a not for profit 501c3 organization and have a core of local community members working with them. More photos of what they, images, I should say, of what they are looking to accomplish. So they're fundraising now to enable them to make this plan happen. The most recent accomplishment on the next slide will show some tree plantings. Uh, at the site that took place earlier this month. And they basically said they're very open to public input and this community board and our committee will be assisting them with that. So it's a very exciting plan, more to come on that. Okay, next, uh, we have a couple of slides for the next item, which is the Tall Ship Danmark, which is coming to Pier 17. It's specifically coming uh, there uh, from September 16th to the 25th over at the north end of Pier 17 where Howard Hughes is uh, doing some construction to allow for other tall ships to come and dock at the seaport, which is good news. So we did hear from Howard Hughes, the Seaport Museum, Manhattan by Sail, who are working on this project along with the government of Denmark. So they're looking forward to um, uh, having this boat docked there during climate week. And it's intended to be a platform to inspire dialogue on the issues of innovative and sustainable so solutions. And they will be sponsoring events that will be open to the public. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, just a couple of more quick items, September 11th Memorial, our committee did make a request that they expand the hours there and we're happy to report that we got a response indicating that uh, they would increase those operating hours for the Memorial and Museum beginning July 13th. So the museum will welcome visitors Wednesday through Mondays from 10 to 5. Memorial will be accessible daily 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. We thank them, but we did also ask if they could possibly open that space at 8 a.m. so people can use it on their way to work. Um, and then finally, we sadly did say goodbye to Diana, who's done such a superb job for our committee over many, many years. Uh, she's done great work, but more to come on that tomorrow. Thank you again, Diana. And thank you all. You have a good evening, unless there's any questions. I see one hand up by Bruce Ehrman. Hi. Um, first of all, I, I just, could you possibly put up the, um, the proposed scheme for the rotary just for a minute again? This has been in the works for, I don't know, 15 years in one form or another. It is so exciting that, uh, thank you, that, I mean, to activate that space, it's a huge space. It's just amazing. And the only other thing, and, you know, I haven't seen, I missed this month's meeting and I haven't seen the actual, you know, way it would lay out. And it's just, it's fantastic if it happens. And the other thing I also want to take this opportunity to say is, you know, I've known Diane since, her origins with the community board, and she has sailed all kinds of seas, rough and smooth, and has always been there, probably even served as a therapist to some community board members on public matters, and, and just I wish her so well, and I thank her for everything. Thank you, Bruce. I'll note that my very first community board one meeting was Landmarks, and it was thrilling. It was a very controversial application for an elevator bulkhead um it was i and you just couldn't get rid of me after that <laughs> thank you so much mark and marissa 
Paul, did, did, did they, with this rotary thing, did they talk about any type of construction schedule, how it would impact the community, uh, uh, the quality of life issues, um, all, all that? No, involved? nothing on that yet. They have to, again, get together with the Port Authority, which owns the space and other agencies, and there's going to be a huge budget to accomplish this project. So. It's going to take them a while, but they seem very determined and they seem like a good group. So, uh, is there I'm funding sure we'll yet? There's no They're funding working. yet, in other words. Uh, no, I think they've applied for money and that's why they formed the 501c3 so they could raise. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah, like Bruce said, I, I think it might have even been longer than 15 years that this has been, uh, something like this has been proposed as, as long as I've been on a community board. It, so it's, long time <laughs> that there's some type of iteration of uh what they might want to do there or whoever but all right we'll see but we will keep that stuff in mind uh if it starts coming to fruition for real down the road uh okay thank you mark. all your life yeah thank you mark thank you paul thank you well you know um d okay last last committee of the night betty um and just take us home Yes, well, thank you. Uh, we have five resolutions. That's most of what we'll be doing. For those interested in the first two items, co-naming or the pedestrian priority, uh, come to the next meeting because they will be discussed in July. So back to the resolutions, which shows here is number three, uh, reviewing the 2022 legislative package addressing placard abuse. This is actually going to be two items because there are two different laws here. So I'm going to advance to the next slide because I just want to quickly walk you through. Uh, not even going to be in the same order. Let's go. We'll do them in the order of the slides. Yes, it, uh, we're going to look at the Elizabeth Fast Ferry. And just as a reminder, for those who are curious about the time frame or anything else of that, this is the boat they have in operation now. But if you go to the next slide, you can see the therefore be it resolved. What exactly are we asking for? Uh, or what was determined by the committee, uh, supporting that it would be Pier 15 for the fast ferry to Elizabeth, New Jersey, and the shuttle service to Newark Airport. Uh, because again, part of the contingency here, because uh, Graham had spoken about all these other Jersey cities be asking for a ferry docking, and I see that coming in the future. But this reso is written specifically for this one because of the connection to Newark Airport. Uh, it employs Hornblower and the EDC to work out the agreement for the fast ferry service because we understand this is the status of where they're working right now. We want to facilitate that. Asking Congressman Nadler and Senator Schumann to uh, get support the raised grant that will help them electrify the service because Graham Birchall is correct. It is currently a tier three diesel engine. It is not electrified ferry. We're asking the New Jersey, the Port Authority is urged to facilitate baggage integration of the fast ferry with Newark Airport so that you can just check in when you get on uh, the ferry, as well as to add electrical infrastructure to the Battery Park City Dock. Again, trying to, con to continue our um, history what? of going for electrification of the ferry services in our district. And then asking the EDC to strongly encourage to installing marine electrification infrastructure so the vessels that, that come into all the docks in our district could go fully electric at some point. Okay, I see two hands up thus far, Betty. One is Bob Schneck and one is Colin, if you are ready for questions. Uh, yes, uh, Bob Schneck. I just wanted to make a quick comment. I've. <laughs> Um, I'm very, very excited about uh, about electric ferries, and I really tried to research this ferry. And I, they said, for example, that they had set up the Alcatraz ferries and that those were uh, uh, net zero, fully electric. And it turns out those are diesel. Uh, we studied pretty carefully all of the all of the companies that have. Uh, electric ferries. There aren't. There's only one operation in the United States, and that's in Alabama. And there's a, there's a few ferries running in Norway. So, 
as I research the matter, I would like them to explain how the ferry they have are going to be uh, net zero because I don't think they're I don't think they're possible, and I don't think they have them in the uh, out in San Francisco either. Well, Bob, I'll let them answer, but first I want to remind you, did you read the resolution? Yes, I did. Okay, the resolution never mentions electric ferries for this but particular I, route. What I'm saying it never does. It thing. mentions that it's diesel, so it does speak to the service that exists, and it also mentions that electrification time frame was not given. It was mentioned that they did not know the time frame when electrification might occur. I just want to make it clear to people there was nothing misleading said. There is very wishful thinking it'll happen quickly, but there was no promise given that that would happen. I just want to clarify that because your statements could be a little misleading as to what the resolution says. I'm less concerned with the resolution, more concerned with whether or not we're actually going to net out with net zero ferries. And right, so, but remember what they're voting he, wait, on. Wait, 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 wait. The person said that he would stay through the meeting. I was hoping he would speak up. Yes, to Eric say, Green, yes. Yes, yes. So I will let him speak, him, but... I'm asking him if he stayed for the meeting to make the comment. Further, I tried to research the matter with Elizabeth, and they were supposedly making a uh, working on, on a resolution with the state. Lucian worked for a few days trying to get that from them, told them that, you know, they really shouldn't, we really shouldn't be strongly, uh, strongly advocating positions where we really haven't done the homework. So that's all I'm saying. I really want electric ferries and I really want them to be effective. But I want the stories to be straight, and I think that's that's what I think is important. So that's my so comment. I, right, I will let Eric speak, but I do want to remind people what they're voting on does not say they're going to be electric. So I don't want to be distracted from that. With that, you know, if Mr. Breen would like to answer. Okay, thank you. Um, we're waiting in the wings here. This is, this is great. I appreciate everybody giving me the time to speak. Um, no, the, um, there's something incorrect in what you said. Uh, we did, we converted the Alcatraz ferries twice. We converted them to diesel, electric, solar hybrids in 2013 and 14, the Alcatraz Clipper and the Alcatraz Flyer. Um, and then when Hornblower, uh, the owner of Alcatraz Cruises, rebid the contract, um, we converted them to full electric. They are definitely full electric. They carry, they carry several thousand passengers a day. They are in consistent daily operation as electric as electric vessels right now. Uh, two boats with over 512 uh, passenger capacity each. We're in the process of building a high current, high speed charging barge for them, which will charge the boats in 20 minutes. And we're also in the process of building a third one, um, the Alcatraz Zero, which was uh, formerly an, an electric hybrid ferry that we did for Hornblower um, that was actually in service in Lower Manhattan. Um, the Hornblower Hybrid that was put on a ship and brought out to San Francisco when they won the award out there. Um, we have done, I'm, I'm a King's Pointer, um, I have a 35 year career doing electrical work on ships. Um, I'm blessed to be in, um, in the right career at the right time and the right life when the industry starts to transition to electric. Um, I've done all the electric ferries in the country. Um, I did the first one, the, the one that you mentioned, the uh, G's Bend Ferry in G's Bend, Alabama. That was the first. We broke a lot of new ground with that with new Coast Guard regulations. Followed that with the Alcatraz boats. Then we did another one for the National Park Service uh, that's in, for, in service for Fort Sumter Tours in Charleston, South Carolina. That's in operation every day. Uh, that's really getting back up to speed. I think it's full passenger capacity now post-COVID. Uh, that's another 512 passenger certified boat. Um, so we have, um, you know, we have the experience. We're, we're, we're you know, it's, it's exactly what we specialize in. We're passionate about pat catching up with Europe. Uh, there's 70 electric ferries in service in Norway. 10 were just announced for, little, um, for Lisbon, Portugal. There's um, ones in the Far East as well. Um, Elizabeth, the other gentleman, um, I think his name was Graham earlier in the, in the meeting, brought up a, a couple of subjects. Um, Elizabeth has the ideal range for electric capacity 
and they, there is adequate battery battery technology. We're using batteries that are made by a company, company uh, a Norwegian company called Corvus Energy, and there's enough battery capacity that we can pack onto the boat to do a trip and a half from Elizabeth to downtown Manhattan. Um, Elizabeth is well within the, in the battery range as compared to Carteret and South Amboy because you have to make the hook and head south down the Arthur Kill. Um, so we've looked into that, and one of the reasons we got involved with Elizabeth with this, with this electric is because of the, the engineering aspects and the range being possible. So this is, um, you know, we, we've made investments in, in the two boats to start the service, and I can assure you we wouldn't have done that if, if, if you know, we, would, we know it wouldn't be possible to begin with. Um, we have, um, uh, there's also, uh, I made some notes here when the other gentleman spoke, uh, when Graham brought up his concerns. There are um, new, newer technologies that are being developed. Um, the naval architecture firm Gloston and Associates in, in uh, Seattle, world-renowned world -renowned, world -renowned naval architecture firm, is developing and under contract for uh, a city in Washington state to develop a high-speed carbon fiber electric ferry uh, with some new battery technology. Um, so the, the, the technology is moving fast. It's kind of driven by all the battery technology with Tesla and the automotive companies. Uh, it's very, very dynamic, and, and, and uh, things, you know, pretty much change every day. The, the uh, weight versus kilowatt hour capacity of the battery packs get, gets, gets greater and greater almost every day. It's an it's, it's exciting, uh, exciting time. Uh, as far as hull configurations, catamaran hulls, uh, like the gentleman Graham mentioned, um, are great. They have different ride characteristics, but they're also uh, they have smaller hulls, so there you can pack less battery into them. So there's you know there's an engineering argument for what type of hull that's going to dictate what type of hull you use. Um, we did with the city of Elizabeth. Uh, this is the important part. We we did the DOT raise grant uh, for an electric ferry terminal. Now we obviously can't put a large electric ferry into service if we don't have a place to charge it. Um, mm -hmm. Went for the DOT raise grant, um, a $5 million planning grant to uh, coordinate it with the transportation system to the airport and, and build out the entire terminal with electric charging infrastructure. And uh, we, we made it through the you know, City of Elizabeth Economic Development Corporation, the, the city planning group, and then the city council and got approved to submit it, um, you know, working with their grant writers. Um, we are, we do have an arrangement um, specifically with um, New York Terminal Corporation in Elizabeth, just south um, south of the ferry dock, to burn um, biofuel. Um, the uh, there's two different types of of, of uh, biodiesel. There's um, uh, they're they're just basically. Uh, Can you do me? No. I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you for a conversation on this at another time sure. because it doesn't sure. necessarily relate directly to what this resolution says and where Bob is. I appreciate that. You can certainly come back and discuss fuels and docking stations with the Environmental Protection Committee and Transportation okay. Joint Committee to to have a look at all the docks that are in CB1 and the possibilities for infrastructure changes. But tonight is not the time for that. So I'm going to ask make a, a tiny comment, and I just want to applaud no, what, no, what, what's been. No, I just uh, have a, a tiny, tiny question. Uh, no, you've already had your time. You will have to wait until we go through the others. I just want I'm to say sorry. I appreciate what's been done. I just want to want to cut a couple of minutes so I can learn about this. That's all. I just want a chance to learn about it before another at week. The at the committee meetings, Bob, please. All right, because we've got to stay related directly to this resolution. All right, I, I, Mitch. I understand. I think Thanks. I was next. Please take me next. Colin, Colin, Colin and Mitch. Yeah, I was going to say exactly what you just suggested, Tammy. I would love for Eric to come back to the Environmental Protection Committee and report um, not just expanding on the technology. I, I actually have four battery companies, and Graham, I respect you, but you're completely wrong about battery technology. It's there, whether it's solid state or LFP batteries, the technology is there. Eric's 100% right about uh, hull design. That's what they're trying to maximize in Washington State right now. Um, but yeah, to make this a very short, pro oh, sorry, one other thing, people need to remember that by actually putting people and commuters onto ferries, you're not only reducing carbon dioxide emissions, but you're also reducing congestion in downtown Manhattan. So let's keep that in focus as well, as well. But I would love it if, uh, hopefully, uh, 
uh, Alice agrees if Eric can come to the Envir Environmental Protection Committee and let us know more about this. I'd love to hear about the tech. I'd love to hear about your progress. I'd love to hear what you're doing. But again, overall, the main point of getting people from one place to another saves carbon emissions. And I think this is a great idea. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Colin, uh, absolutely. And we'll tie it in with the new ferry that's being purchased by Governor Island, which is, is a hybrid and sounds very exciting. So this is a great opportunity. Thank you. All right. All right Mitch. Mitch, Hello? Mitch, and then we're going to call the question. Okay, Betty, I just wanted to ask you, and I'm, this is a wonderful resolution. So just a peripheral question. Did you ever get any idea on what they might be charging for the uh, going to Newark airport? Or because I didn't know if it would be applicable to put in something where like affordable as opposed to making it just like people that can afford limos to the airport instead of that, you know, taking the ferry as opposed to affordable for people that might be taking public transportation. So did they give you any idea about that or not really? I'll let Eric Breen speak, but uh, the number given in the committee was $26 for the ferry ride, and they were looking at maybe $3 add-on to go to the airport from the ferry. Okay, all right. And then the other the other just suggestion, while I agree with everything, I was just seeing, uh, Thanks. you know, maybe not to focus so much, you know, the integration of baggage management, while it looks great on paper, for those of you that are frequent travelers, every extra uh, point where the baggage is being handled is another point where baggage could be lost or you know uh, messed up so that's not something that i would really focus on even though it's great on paper because i would prefer like not to have my baggage from that point because it's uh but so that was just something i just wanted to make a comment but nothing uh, of, of urgency yeah, no, and you wouldn't have to check it in, but for many people, it's highly desired. And I was a heavy duty traveler. Right, I understand. On I understand. Wall Street, it would, I can see why they are promoting it as, as an option in the future. If, if they do it well, it would be wonderful. But uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so thank let's you. Call, yeah, thank you. Let's call a question. So I'm sorry, you know, Richard Corman, but I'm going to go with Tammy's time frame. Second. Great. And Lucian, do you want to take the vote? I could take the vote if that's okay. Well, really, no, I can't I get my I can't it. get my question in to understand what we're voting on here. I uh, no, we we we. That's why I said we're going to follow. What I, was I, I, announced, and that was we're going to call the question after after Mitch. Because otherwise, it can go on all night, and there are more of them too. Okay, stop. Richard, take a look at the therefore be it resolves that are on the screen. The the uh, resolutions were distributed. If you have, we are beyond the question time. I apologize, you didn't get yours answered, but it's been asked. The question's been asked, it's been seconded, the vote's about to go. Mimi, take it away. Thanks. Are there, is anyone opposed? Or so opposed. Anyone else? But there's no camera. Oh, yeah, I got that. Uh, any abstentions? Meltzer abstains. Foreman abstains. Anyone else? Any recusals? Thank you. Okay. Next Thank resolution. You, Mickey, next. Yeah, change the slide. Uh, this is from the Friends of Friends of Dwayne Park. If you go on to the next one, so you can re be refreshed with what it is. Uh, this is simply applauding them, the Friends of Duane Park for their dedication. This is their 225th anniversary, which is the point of this resolution. Uh, it urges the Street Activity Permit Office to approve uh, their Street Activity Permit application. They will be closing Duane Street between Hudson and Greenwich and stop traffic entering from Staple Street uh, for a period of one day for their celebration on September 18. It urges the DOT to approve the Friends of Duane Park's permit application to hang banners on their decorative, or some people look at them as historic lampposts, uh, and also urges our council member, the Honorable Christopher Barte, to assist with these two processes, which in fact he has confirmed in person he's very enthusiastic about doing. Okay, I do not see any hands up, Betty. Call the question. Right, and Mimi, do you want to vote? Questions been called. Questions been seconded. Mimi, 
Excellent. Um, anyone opposed? Okay. Anyone want to abstain? Any accusal recusals? Nope. Thank you. Thanks. The next slide will go to the next resolution. Uh, this is about intro law 259 2022 community notification of proposed major transportation projects. Uh, and what the point of it is, it would be supporting it with the expansion of community board notification process by including the construction or removal of bus lane, bus, uh, bus lane, busway, or bike lane as a major transportation project. That is the real change of this law. It specifically names what they consider uh, covered by this. It, uh, what the committee decided is they did not support the bill's proposed expansion, so would like a modification of the bill for the time frame going from 60 days uh, down to 45 days, well, 30 days after a DOT presentation, if one is asked for, or 45 days after the notification, if there is no pre presentation requested by that community board. Uh, because otherwise the time frame was felt to be just too long and it was bogging everything down. The next one is does not support the bill's proposed requirement that the DOT provide a presentation for every major transportation project. Some of these are repainting lines, one block of a bus of a bike lane that's already known to be there. So it can get pretty trivial and there can be points where the committee really is not that interested in having a presentation because it's so straightforward. So saying that it should be to amend the bill so that the DOT is only required to make a presentation when one is requested by the affected community board. And I think if you go to the next slide, there's one more aspect to this. Oh, yes, there was. And the DOT notify the affected community boards of these projects before any construction contracts are signed, ensuring that the affected community board would have a meaningful opportunity to comment and provide input. So I'm looking for hands and there are quite a few. So we'll start with Tammy, Tammy, then Alice, then Bruce, then Jess. Sorry, Tammy, just a quick point of information. We have to do a roll call for one of these last two. Maybe this is the one. This is I, the last one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Colin is suggesting to have this be a roll call one since there are so many hands up to start with. Yep. Yeah, yeah and, okay. that's fine. All right. Uh, then we'd have to, we could take them together. Maybe I don't know. I don't think we can. I think Colin, yeah, you're so I'm just trying to save time. That's all. No, you're not going to be able to, because we're doing this. All right. So here we go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start. Conceptually, I disagree with the positions of the committee on this because it goes against everything that a community board seeks for transparency and public engagement. The city agency of DOT is a large agency with numerous uh, community liaisons that work in it. A community board is 50 volunteers and a tiny office. So having having the, the onus of requesting everything consistently from DOT versus having the ability to say, to have them send it and decline whether or not you need to have a large presentation is, just seems like it doesn't solve the problems that we have and well yes painting lines on a bus may not be a big deal they're a large city agency there is no reason in my mind as a chair that they cannot put in any opportunity to within their planning process to come to a community board and talk to, to constituents as small or as large as it is the changes that have happened in the public realm with open restaurants, with potential the new up and coming text change about adding um, for green infrastructure on the streets and other things like that. Yes, it may just be painting lines, but what has changed since the lines were painted for the bus route? Have they added sheds? Do sheds need to go away? Have they, you know, are there, has there been a change from a residential to a mixed use environment? Have, what has happened? I see absolutely no reason that we wouldn't support notification at, at a full 60 days. I particularly think about if you were notified now at the end of June for something, we don't meet in August. 45 days would put them in August for any time now. 
and I don't know anybody who wants to come back through and try and look at a major transportation project in the months of July and August when most of the people with school children are not necessarily natively here because that is the time that they have to travel or do whatever with their children. So I'm I'm coming off kind of strong on this because there are parts that I like. Part about the engagement, I cannot support the way this is written as this is written because it denies the opportunity for a community board to engage and provides the onus on them versus leaving it back with the city agency. It makes me feel like we're back in the de Blasio era on that. And we're voting out of fear instead of saying you fear it will delay you fear it will cause controversy open the door have it come have it be a regular process and then we move on that is my opinion thank you let's go on to alice because again what you're saying isn't in conflict with what was said and it may be a wording change but anyway let's go on and hear more people so alice and then jess and Betty is always, uh, you know, very coherently written resolution. And um, I have to say, I um, agree wholeheartedly with Tammy on this one. I do not agree with this particular resolutions. What I'm understanding as a basic call to reduce the time to respond and reduce the number of presentations to a community. Um, I think, you know, this just is you know, not an intelligent thing to do on behalf of the community. I have to say, I don't think there, we have to race to put in a bike lane. I don't think there's necessary urgency there. And I think that we should be given, and every community should be given, this of course is all communities, should be given an opportunity to see full presentations, as many as we need. And often it's, you know, the opposite. We're not getting enough. And certainly that we would want, you know, welcome the time. I don't think we have one example of anything, at least since my tenure on the board, where we've wished things went faster in terms of response. So um, I, I'm going to have to say I, I kind of agree with that. Um, so, uh, but I, you know, there's a great deal of thought and um, intelligence here, but I, I think that I'm, I, I disagree with it. So I do, I do want to make that, make that note and thank you. Yeah, so obviously there's a misunderstanding because the comment made about if a community board asked wasn't that they have to take the initiative because they still have to be notified by the DOT. It doesn't take away the notification from the DOT. It just means there were some where the community members say, we don't even want to hear it. Don't make us listen to presentations we don't want. Ready? If they notify us by mail during the pandemic, which has happened for a variety of different things, we did not know for months and we were not offered opportunities because that is one of the things that happened during the pandemic just so you know that's why i'm extraordinarily this is 100 percent based on my experience from the last few years all right well let's go in on here jess and then jeff and bruce thanks betty so um i actually Took the lead on drafting this resolution, and I, I originally supported it. Um, it was designed to be sort of a compromise between um, people like me and some other people on the committee who were pretty alarmed um, by this what this legislation is trying to do, and those uh, like Tammy and Alice who have legitimate concerns about the current notification process. Um, I'm actually inclined now to vote against this resolution uh, for a different reason, which is that I don't think I can support. This legislation um, at all. Um, I agree with much of the concerns we've heard already regarding, you know, community engagement. And I, of course, support community engagement. Um, but I think there's a difference between an opportunity for engagement and adding another veto point along a long uh, administrative process that already exists to get crucial projects, simple projects, such as putting up a bike lane on a simple uh, single city block. Um, and this, I think, tips uh, it towards the balance of. Uh, tips tips the balance towards being more of a veto point uh, than a legitimate opportunity for community engagement. There's, you know, the requirement to provide a presentation for virtually every project that the Department of Transportation would want to engage in. There are long waiting periods. Um, uh, if you do the math, it could be over three months um, before the Department of Transportation can start putting up a, a bike lane uh, on a single city block. Um, so, you know, I think there are, there are ways that we can deal with the problems that we've, we've heard about today in terms of streamlining the notification process. The legislation actually proposes um, notifying of the project via the website, which I think is 
is a good <laughs> start. Um, you know, at, look, if, at the end of the day, taking a broader view, I mean, we are the community board and I think, you know, we all support community engagement, but there has to, you know, there has to be a limit on, um, you know, when these projects can get going. The Department of Transportation, at the end of the day, is directed by our elected leaders. It's overseen by our elected city council. Um, we should be there to advise, but we cannot set up the process where community boards across the city are going to have such large power to veto such simple projects. Um, so for that reason, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, vote against my own resolution. Um, but um, I hear everyone's concerns, but I can't support this, this legislation at all. Thank you. And on to uh, Jeff and Bruce, and then I see Tammy's hands up again. Um, I, I, I agree with a lot of the sentiments that uh, Jess uh, just articulated. Um, I, I, I had viewed this resolution, and I think maybe I still do, um, as a good balance between the concerns that Jess was raising and the concerns that Tammy was raising. Uh, I, I do have a real concern that infrastructure in New York and, and indeed in the United States in general takes way too long to get done. Um, and uh, there are, an in, and it's not unique to New York City and uh, other places have it even worse than we do where any little local group can effectively veto or uh, uh, seriously delay, delay much needed projects. And transportation projects are um, more likely to span community boards than lots of other projects, because obviously the point is to get from point A to point B, and often that point B is outside of one community board and into another or many multiple boards. And the idea that 50 boards have to approve um, uh, something or can, you know, any one of them can throw a wrench in the works can be problematic. That said, uh, bureaucrats have a way of ignoring local communities and doing things that are crazy. Uh, and, uh, and often the only way people can even find out that they're crazy is to have engagement with the community. So I think there is a balance uh, that goes on. Um, my suggestion is on this particular resolution is that Maybe Betty, you want to revisit it in committee, taking into account the comments that Tammy and Alice are making, as well as the sentiments articulated by Jess and see if the balance needs to be uh, tweaked. Um, I would vote for this resolution as is. I would probably not vote for it modified in a meeting like this. If modified in a meeting of your committee where you've given lots of thoughts to all these considerations. I might very well vote for however you modify it, um, but I, um, uh, but I don't think this kind of resolution should be modified in a meeting like this. Thank you. And I think oh, Tammy wasn't you were next, and then I see Joe Lerner's hands up, so he would go after you. I believe Joe Lerner should go next, and sure. then I'll go. Joe. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tammy, you hit the nail on the head and everything is hot air after that. So let's get on with the vote. And it's okay to go back to committee if they don't get it right the first time. That's why we meet once a month to do things like this. Thank you. Before I go, thank you, Joe. Before I go, Bruce Airman got uh, bumped and he had his hand up. So. Bruce would go before me. Thank you very much, Tammy. And I'm so sorry. I've had some internet problems. Uh, so I also, I heard Tammy's uh, comments. I didn't hear subsequent ones. So if I'm redundant, cut me off. I have had so much experience in this domain um, going back nine years. I lived through the Houston Street reconstruction project, the Warren Street reconstruction project, the horrendous Worth Street reconstruction project, which, by the way, was finished after seven weeks, uh, seven uh, years, two months ago. Well, this wouldn't and now, that kind of project. let me finish, please. And and now, sure. now is 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 reconstructing a piece without notification or comment. 
One little thing I want to note is that when you use the word notification in the before, be it therefore resolved that, even though you go on to interpret it, the word notification is something the community board argued over with DOT, which is probably one of the most uh, uh, rogue uh, um, parts of the city government for months before we even established pre-meetings regarding the reconstruction of Ward Street. As far as DOT concerned, notification means just that, notification. It does not mean discussion. It does not mean input. It does not mean negotiation. Notification to them means here it is. Now you know. Furthermore, I would just add that with all of the incredible repainting, reconfiguring, and redesigning of Manhattan streets, the, the accident and pedestrian rate is the highest it's been since about 2016. So I agree without having heard everybody's comments that this really needs to be reworked. And yes, I think every major project should be subject to discussion and negotiation for community board automatically. Thank you. Eddie, go to Mark, because I've already spoken. I try uh, to get sure, everybody. We can do that, although I'm going to withdraw this, so just so you know. If you, are you making a motion to withdraw now? Uh, well, yeah, no, I am going to withdraw it. So, Mark, if you want to speak, you can, but we're going to withdraw no, it. No, no, if you're I'll withdrawing. Be, I'll be quick. Mark, uh, even Mark, though, Mark, uh, if last you... month uh, we broke the streak Mark. of agreeing, uh, Bruce and I agree again, so. And if, if you are withdrawing the resolution, thank you, Mark, please attend Bruce, please attend the meeting. Okay. Anybody who is interested, please attend in, uh, July. And then with that motion, with the resolution withdrawn. Because you're bringing it back to committee for discussion. Sure. Let's move to the next 1. Yes, uh, intro 500, the revocation of placards for vehicles without city plates, unless for disability or result of a collective bargaining agreement. It's a long legal name, but anyway, this would be for supporting that lead legislation because we'd all love to have the placards pulled back. And then urging the mayor again to sign it, because I think this is consistent with where the community board has voted over and over again. But Tammy, if you'd like to speak, because I see your hand. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm just reminding people this is roll call and it's 914. So let's uh, go quickly. Uh, so I'm going to take my hand down. And okay, got Pat. more than Eric, you. The only question I have is that every time I bring up, you know, the placket parking for the police and the firemen, I'm told it's part of their um, negotiation with their unions. And so. It isn't. All right. I hope not. I would love to support. It them. is with the DOE, correct, Tammy? That's right, buddy. Yeah. Yes. 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 So not with the police and the firemen. It's not part of their so negotiation. The police no. have an agreement according to, it depends. The police have an agreement that the city has to provide parking but does not detail where the parking is that the parking will be provided at no cost if warranted if needed um but that doesn't mean that they have to provide placard parking it's there's an agreement that the city should have to pay a lot of money and that the police who need to drive shouldn't have to pay but there's no determination on where that is and if and it's only if available, and the thing is, they're parking illegally. So it's not like it's available because it's legal. It's available because they're taking illegal spots. And also, what do you mean so, by if of it, if they need to drive? You know, I mean, we don't need to have this discussion here. But what does for, if they need to drive mean? Yeah, uh, we have a copy of uh, one of the old um, agreements that I can forward to you. Okay. Thank you, Betty. Uh, Eric still has his hand up. Yes. Yeah, hi. Uh, the proposal to restrict the issuance of parking placards 
to only elected officials and to the disabled is a knee jerk reaction, which doesn't take into account operational and logistical needs of New York City government. For example, if there's a doctor on duty or if any other employee is expected to respond immediately or at different locations, is New York City ready to accept increased response times and or more city owned vehicles, both of which are more costly? The real problem is the lack of accountability and enforcement. Yes, there are many pla there are many parking placards which need to be recalled. However, instead of a ban, the public, le public needs to have a full account of who, why, <clears throat> and when parking placards are issued and used. And these data need to be available for public scrutiny. The issuance and cancellation of parking placards must be decided on a case by case basis. It, it's really, I just don't agree with the, the the complete restriction of it, except for elected officials and the disabled, case by case basis. Oh, well, if not elected officials, I just want to point that out. I, I thought that was in the when we had the motion in the committee. I remember it was those two. No, this is the law. It's it, not they have city plates. If it's a city owned vehicle, obviously they're not going to ticket it because the city right. isn't going to pay itself. But but it's not elected officials. It's city vehicles with city plates. Or if somebody has a disability plate and happens to be somebody who would who would otherwise have a city issued placard, they're saying those are separate things and we're not talking about them. Okay. That's just and again, it's the law, it's not us saying it. All the questions? Be Betty, I Second. think that I I think that he was talking about the thing you have about an elected Mitch, official. Mitch, Mitch, you cannot interrupt. You I'm, have to I'm, put your hand up. I'm putting you my hand up now. Hand. We called the question. Oh, you know, you know, okay. but th that's what Mitch McConnell does. Stop, 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 stop. Eric, are you done? I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Please put your hand down. Mitch, because the call the question was done at the same time that Mitch was yelling. Oh. Mitch, I, I, I am. Asking you to not yell out, you were not recognized by the chair. So, if somebody's ready to call the question, for God's sakes, put your hands up. Or Betty, whoever is ready. Mitch, do you feel the need to clarify what Eric himself said? I think Eric's comment stood on his own. Okay. Uh, Alice. You go. Call to question. Second. We are done. No more hands. You must have your camera on to vote. Mimi, take us away. All right. This is going to be a roll call. Yes. Russo. Emma Russo. Abstain. Once again, camera is not operable. For both. Okay. Um, blank. I guess. I'm sorry, what was that? Blank, yes. Thank you. Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy abstains. Thank you. Cameron. Cameron, yes. Thank you. Chang. Chang votes yes. Thank you. Chapman. Chapman votes yes. Thank you. Charcutian. Charcutian abstains. Thank you. Cole. Cole votes yes. Thank you. Coleman? Yes. Thank you. Foreman? Foreman, yes. Thank you. Kucha? All right. Uh, Airman? Airman, yes. Thank you. Flores? Flores, yes. Thank you. Flynn, yes. Forsberg? Forsberg votes yes. Yes. Friedman? Friedman, yes. Thank you. Froman? Froman, no, because there is an elected official license plate requirement in this whereas. Galloway? Galloway, yes. All right. Goldstein? Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant? Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta? Gupta, yes. Thank you. James? 
Uh, Ju? Ju, yes. Thank you. K? K, yes. Thank you. Canel? L, yes. Thank you. Ketring? Ketring, yes. Thank you. Copel? Copel, yes. Thank you. Lerner? Lerner, yes. Thank you. Lewinson? Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Lynn? Bernard Lynn? Uh, Lyon? Lyon, yes. Thank you. Mahoney? Mahoney, yes. Thank you. McHugh? McHugh, yes. Thank you. Meltzer? Meltzer, yes. Thank you. Oh, and don't anybody go because we need the vote announcement by Jeff Galloway after this. Thank you. I, I think we have two more resolutions. Okay. Um, Minsley? Uh, Minsley votes yes. Thank you. Moore? Moore, yes. Thank you. Schneck? Schneck votes yes. Thank you. Star? Laura Star? All right, uh, Jimmy Song. Jimmy Song, yes. Thank you, Farrah Song. Farrah Song is having technical issues. She just uh, uh, having connectivity. Okay, uh, Townley. Townley, yes. Thank you, Z. Z, yes. Thank you. You. Two votes, no. Thank you. Zelter? Zelter abstain. All right. And uh, did anyone join that I haven't called that needs to have an audible vote to be counted as present? All right. That is um, 33 in favor, two opposed, and three abstain. Hey, can you go to the next slide? Because I still keep thinking there's one more to go. I think there's Dwayne Park. No, we, we did Dwayne. Dwayne Park. Dwayne Park because was unanimous. There's reporting of hazardous instructions. There is another one. Two minutes, we're done. But unless I completely screwed it up. Uh, yeah, no, it's this intro 501 2022. Citizen reporting of hazardous obstructions. I do not have that in the minutes. Yes, well, this one is on, it was voted in committee. It's a reintroduction of 219, which was in 20, introduced in 2020 and kind of died. It wasn't voted on because uh, it wasn't brought up. We had a resolution, at we, the community board, in April 2022. Uh, and in response to that, Christopher Marte, our representative, is a co-sponsor of this particular bill that I'm talking about now. This supplements the legislation on placard abuse and dangerous parking that the New York City Council passed in 2018 and 2019 by addressing the lack of enforcement by the New York City Police Department. Uh, it allows citizens to report illegal parking in bike lanes, bus lanes, crosswalks, uh, at a fire hydrant and on sidewalks, so very specific locations. It includes parking by city vehicles and private vehicles with a city issue placard, so not just private vehicles. And it authorizes the DOT to set up a reporting system, including what evidence needs to be submitted by that citizen that is reporting these hazardous obstructions. The violations are returnable to the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings. So it's not as if someone submits and automatically a fine goes out. It is filtered through and there is a legal system that you can go through if you want to dispute it through oath. Or step off. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I, I'm, I see no record of this either in the existing minutes or in the results that were sent out. This one, um, it, in the was, minutes, it was combined with the other with the other one. So I just separated it to clarify. I need, there were two I need, together. I need yeah, further clarification. Together. Which other one? Because there have been many in, in this. So which other one, Lucian? Because I need. It Back needs to, to the be original clear. slide and you'll see it. Colin, uh, it was, I see it, I pulled up the agenda. 
It was yes. see this number three. Of... No, on number six on the agenda that was distributed to the public, they are combined for intro 0501 2022 and 0500 2022. Right. Yeah, my agenda doesn't, the agenda I'm looking at doesn't show that. So I'm not sure where that happened, but whatever you want to do, I'm sure. In the minutes, yeah. I clear, I, I split it in the minutes. The, these were, the titles were together. They were grouped together on the original agenda. Um, they were taken as two separate resolutions because they were I see it. Yeah, I see it. I see so it. I just, yeah. So when that was carried over from the agenda, um, I I didn't split it. So I made that a little bit more clear now in the minutes. Yeah. Sorry, Madam Chair. This is the secretary's fault. That was not the last resolution. So blame me, everybody, not Tammy. That one's on me. Colin, you're yeah, demoted. To Colin, you're demoted to assistant secretary. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You just ran for that. Damn. Yeah. 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 Don't tell me to quit altogether, Tammy. <laughs> so quiet, you. Keep going. Yeah, All right. Would you go to the next slide? Please. Yeah, just to remind people, this is just saying, you know, thanking uh, our council member because he was the co-sponsor and asking uh, Mayor Adek, Eric Adams to please sign the bill when passed by the legislator. Thank you. You have three hands up, Betty. Yes, uh, and we'll, we'll take them in the order they're in. So Galloway, you and Airman is how they appear on my screen. Correct. Thank you. All right. I, I can't uh, overstate how strongly I oppose this legislation um, for a couple of reasons. One is that I think it's just absolutely horrible, horrible, horrible public policy to have and encourage citizens to inform on one another. Um, and now I just stated that in kind of a, a, a negative way, but even stated more neutrally of having citizens choose to enforce the law is, I think, wrong on any number of levels. And I think it's particularly wrong uh, on legislation like this because it doesn't just talk about hazardous obstructions, it creates new parking, new offenses that currently do not exist. It, it would prohibit even stopping in front of a fire hydrant if you are 1,320 feet from a school. Now, there's no school that I can see out my window, but I am 1,320 feet from PS 276. Um, uh, and I, I would venture to say that almost the entirety of Community Board 1 and may, maybe most of Manhattan is 1,320 feet or less from a school somewhere. So this would mean that a taxi could not drop me off in front of a fire hydrant. Um, a taxi could not drop me off on South End Avenue if it chose to stop in a bike lane, which is on both sides of South End Avenue where I live. Um, and if all you have to worry about are the traffic cops, you know, they, they see you stopping there, which I think is ridiculous to have as an offense to begin with, uh, because where's the taxi supposed to stop um, uh, on South End Avenue? In the middle of the street, <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, but if all you have to worry about our traffic enforcement uh, or, or cops, presumably they will exercise some common sense and maybe just tell you to move or if you're in the wrong place. But if somebody, all they have to do is snap a picture of you and you're out 175 bucks, I think that's just bad. Um, and um, I, I recognize that there is a problem with parking in wrong places, but this legislation goes far, far beyond dealing with hazardous parking. Um, I mean, you couldn't even drop your kids off in front of the school in front of the fire hydrant, which I used to do all the time when my kids were in school, because that would now be a hundred and seventy-five dollar fine if somebody had a cell phone and snapped my picture. So, I oppose the legislation because I think the prohibitions are inappropriate and overreaching, and separate and apart from even if the prohibitions 
Yeah. Hey, I don't, I don't approve um, uh, citizens enforcing laws against one another. That's my comment. Thank you. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to ask the office to do timers on two minutes to everybody from this point forward to limit the um, discussion because I see like 10 hands up. So, in order, Betty, as you've set them, two minutes each, please. It's uh, Eric, Bruce, Mitch, Tammy, you think we'll have your opportunity then. Okay. Um, in committee, it was mentioned that. Well, the citizen that reports this would be subject to a 25% collector's fee or 25% of the summons. So I, I recall that in, in, in the, uh, in the committee, but I, I want to say, and it's, it's what Bruce had said. I'm sorry. The previous person had said to have citizens report on fellow citizens is very dis for money is distasteful. The real problem is lack of enforcement. If the NYPD is not enforcing traffic regulations. Then the Department of Transportation should have their own separate enforcement units to take this task. Enforcement of traffic regulations must be done by professionals who take into account the full situation, such as if there is no other viable alternative, if traffic safety was really compromised, and not for pettiness or personal profit. Citizen reporting for personal gain creates a situation to foster revenge and maybe even violence. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce and Mitch. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to vote on this, but I will say that uh, I have to agree with Jeff in principle. This reminds me of certain laws that have taken effect in places like Arkansas and Mississippi, if you know what I mean. It's redolent of, of citizens uh, informing on other citizens for slight offenses. I think there are huge crime issues to be addressed in New York and this kind of sniping over pulling over at a hydrant for a minute is, is dangerous. And I also think that some of the transportation resolutions like this one border on polemics on huge issues that need very fine consideration rather than broad strokes. Thank you. Next. Mitch, you were next. Yes, next I was Tammy. just waiting to be called. Uh, okay, well, Bruce and Jeff and uh, uh, basically echoed what I was going to say, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring up another point. Uh, at one of the committee meetings, one of the gentlemen on our committee has said, well, we already have citizens reporting on other citizens with the, say, with the see something, say something. And I actually thought about that. And... Now I wanted to respond to that. Everybody realizes that had nothing to do with something like this. That had to do with terrorism. That's that slogan came up where if you see a package, you know, like in a train station or in an airport, when those things were happening, say something. Or if you see somebody being violently attacked, that slogan had nothing to do with a citizen like taking a picture for monetary gain on a neighbor dropping off a, their kids in front of their house. So I would just, if there's any way that, uh, because the rest of the bill is wonderful, that, that uh, the financial incentive and on private citizens versus private citizens, not talking about placards, can be taken out. I think you'd almost have 100% uh, uh, approval. But if that's going to stay, I, I, would, I would like everybody to, uh, to see that that's a, a dangerous slippery slope. Thank you. Okay, after Mitch, Michael, Kettering, Cody, Morton, Jess. Mr. Kettering. handled in committee. Yes. Um, I just wanted to, I, I, you know, agree with what Jeff was saying and Eric was saying, and I, I actually want to point out, uh, we at the Alliance had some personal experience with this. We had a very slight infraction on idling. And is, you know, as Eric pointed out, if they considered the context and our history, you know, it might be something they would let pass, except when you have a bounty situation, we, we went down there to, to argue our case. And there were a number of bounty hunters in the hallway who were laughing and saying things like, how many do you have today? And they would say, oh, I have 15. Oh, I have 20. And so when you have that financial incentive, 
it totally perverts the whole idea of a reasonable kind of consideration of the facts. And uh, of course, the bounty hunter is going to vociferously argue that, you know, they're, even if it's the tiniest infraction, they should be found guilty because he's got a commission at stake. So, yeah, I, I think this is egregious. You know, uh, delivery people have hard enough time in the city. And yes, we could all find out situations where people, you know, certain companies might be abusive, but that's where, you know, DOT, considering all of the facts in the situation, could maybe take everything into account rather than just a bounty hunter trying to get a commission. So I would strongly vote against this. Thank you. Cody. I, I I support this uh, proposed legislation, and only in part because um, NYPD has not, or other enforcement agencies haven't done a really good job as far as clearing, you know, making sure bike lanes are clear of traffic. Um, if you remember, in 2018, a young woman from Australia who was visiting was riding on a bike lane on Central Park West, and a livery driver was there parked and she went out to pass the livery driver and was hit by a private truck caller and killed. So I think that there are lives at stake and this is something, you know, it may not be the right, you know, form with, as you call it, bounty hunters, but, but they're, you know, this, this is a problem. Obstruction of bike lanes is a dangerous problem. And um, I'm not sure exactly what the solution is, but I think this this is a, 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 a right step in the right direction. Thank you, Cody, Morton, Jess. Who's, who's going, is it my turn? Horsberg uh, excuses himself. Morton, is thank my you turn? very much. Yes, Morton, it is your turn, yes. All right, thank you. Um, uh, I have a perspective on this as a parent of, uh, school age child um i'm very familiar with uh, some, the uh, pick up and drop off at uh, the elementary schools in our district and i know for example this on the spruce street school or ps 150 uh where my son attends uh which is uh relocating to a uh, a new location next year uh and uh, which is one of the things that we're very concerned about is the pick up and drop off of uh, students at the school next year. Um, uh, there are a, a, a substantial number of parents who come and drop off and pick up their uh, children with uh, cars and motor vehicles, uh, sometimes even um, uh, Ubers and TC cars. Uh, and if you go down Spruce Street, for example, at 2.30 in the afternoon, as I do on, on a bike, because I'm a big uh, city bike user, um, that bike lane on Spruce Street is uh, uh, obstructed by the cars of, uh, of parents and caregivers who are picking up their children from the school. So if you're going to create an offense of blocking uh, the bike lane uh, within, uh, uh, what is it, 1,300 uh, uh, some feet from the school, you're going to be penalizing uh, groups of parents every single day who um, are picking up and dropping off their children at these schools. And um, and also, can, as someone else mentioned, about possibly creating a lot of conflict between people who are uh, upset by this and parents who want to do this and see this as the best way to pick up and, and drop off their kids. So, seconds. Uh, so uh, anyway, I don't, I don't think that... Um, uh, well, excusing is, herself. I don't think this is a good idea in the way that it's drafted. Okay. I'm going to withdraw it. Betty, at this point, you've got a couple hands up. I'm not saying yes to withdraw this. We'll end up doing it yet because this is the last resolution and we have to take the vote. So you cannot. It either goes or it fails because it's the last reso. But we just voted on the last one. Betty, I'm not. this is called this was called for the last reso for roll call vote. So Betty, it's my fault. I made a mistake. We have to do it again. Yep. Tammy, right. can I ask you one question about procedure? No, Mitch. Mitch. Mitch, please. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get through anybody who has not had a chance to speak first. That is the way the community board operates. Okay, okay. It was just about procedural, but I'll wait. 
Okay. So you have already spoken. Um, uh, who, uh, if you have already spoken, do me a favor, please take your hand down once. So Jess, Eric, and Mark have not spoken, correct? On this on this resolution. That's right. All right. All right, Jess, in that order, Jess, Eric, and Mark. Okay, so first thing I want to say is, is in response to Morton, we're not creating new infractions here. We're, this is about existing infractions that are just not being enforced, and this is a, a carefully tailored way to enforce it. So I, I'm going to make two quick points because I think this is being blown widely out of proportion. And you know, I'll remind people that we already had much of this debate when we passed a resolution supporting this a couple months ago. Um, the, the first point is that we're making a lot of, of noise here about people parking and getting dropped off from a taxi or dropping their kids off from school. Um, there's an existing law like this already for idling trucks. And if you've looked at the procedure that you have to go through to actually successfully get the bounty back, I'm going to call it a bounty because that's what everyone's calling it. It is an extremely onerous procedure. You have to download a certain app, have a timestamp on it. It has to be for a certain amount of time. It's like, three minutes before and after the infraction. This is not going to end with there being an epidemic of people getting tickets um, for dropping off their kids at school or getting out of a taxi. Um, which brings me to my second point, which is that uh, this broader question of civics, I, I was the one who brought up the, if you see something, say something uh, in committee. And I think I brought it up at full board a couple months ago. Um, and the point was a broader point, which is that we already report on each other all the time for all kinds of things. We were talking about it before, calling 311 when there's a, a loud restaurant. We call 311 for parking violations now. This does not turn people into private police officers, law enforcement officers. All this does is take out the middleman, which is the NYPD, and says you are going to send this directly to an office, which is then going to investigate and can still have discretion, and there will still be a hearing, or there can be a hearing, um, this is not turning people into law enforcement agents. This is just saying that the NYPD is not capable or not willing to do it for whatever reason. And it is also Seconds. recognizing that we are not going to create a new law enforcement agency within the Department of Transportation. It's not realistic. This is a carefully tailored solution to a careful, carefully tailored problem. I'm well said. Thank you. Yes, can I make a motion to table? Shouldn't Betty, because some of us need this. We should just have a vote. Back in that term. Okay, please not talk over or out of order, people. Well, then you should have done it already. How's that? Done what? Absolutely stop. It, we, we are not going down this road as the 50 amazing community board members that we know we have. As I've said before, you get two minutes, you speak once, it goes back around. You don't get to interrupt somebody else. A motion was made. It was out of order seconded, but it was heard and seconded. We will take a vote on tabling this. Because just because something is controversial does not mean it automatically goes back to committee and everybody needs to remember that. But because it was a motion made and a motion seconded, we will take a vote to table this because we have to have a roll call vote to end the meeting. Colin, and if you are voting, we must have quorum and your cameras have to be on. That's it. Colin. Uh, board back. <laughs> uh, sorry, Mimi. That's Mimi's job still. Hey, please don't leave when this is done because once I get the order to close the vote, I will send the results to Jeff. Cool. Um, Marissa. Yes to table. All right. Uh, blank. Blank. Yes to table. Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy. Yes. Thank you. Cameron. Cameron. No. Thank you. Chang. Chang votes no to table. Okay. Uh, thank you. Chapman. Chapman votes yes. Thank you. Charcutian. Charcutian votes yes. Thank you. Cole. Cole votes no. Thank you. Coleman. Coleman votes no. Thank you. Corman. Corman votes no. Thank you. Kucha. 
I'm assuming it's still gone. Not here. That's it. All right. Um, Airman. Airman votes yes to table. Thank you. Flores. Flores, no. Thank you. Uh, Flynn votes yes to table. Forsberg. Forsberg votes no to table. Thank you. Friedman. Friedman, no. Thank you. Broman. Broman, yes. Thank you. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein. Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant. No. Thank you. Gupta. Gupta, no. Thank you. James. All right. Absent. Um, Ju. You abstain. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hey, yes to table. Thank you. Canal. Canal, yes. Thank you. Kettering. Kettering, yes. Thank you. Uh, Coppell. Not there. All right. Uh, Lerner. Lerner, yes. Thank you. Lewinson. Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Lynn. Um, Lyon. No. Thank you. Mahoney. Mahoney, yes to mercy. Thank you. Yes. McHugh. McHugh, yes. Thank you. Meltzer. Meltzer, no. Thank you. Minsley. Minsley, yes to table. Thank you. Moore. Moore, no to table. Thank you. Schneck. Uh, Bob Schneck. Schneck votes yes to table. Thank you. Star. Abstain. Thank you. Song. Uh, Jimmy Song. No. Thank you. Vera Song. Vera no. Thank you. Townley. Yes to table. Thank you. Z. Yes to table. Thank you. You. You vote yes to the table. Question now. Thank you. Seltzer. Seltzer abstain. Abstain. All right. Let me. Um... Oh, man. In my career, my career, maybe twice I abstained. In um, 50 years. I'm sorry. I'm having trouble uh, tallying it. Let me just copy this over. There was. Or I might be able to see. Uh, all... while, while Mimi oh, is tallying and counting, I'm going to ask Lucian and Jeff Galloway if we can close the vote. Okay, in favor is 21, opposed is 15, and abstain is 3. Oh, tabled. Vote carried. Motion passes. Motion passes. Okay, motion passes to table. Thank you very much, everybody, on that. So the discussion is closed. Please go back to the committee to discuss that. Um, Jeff? Lucian, nominating committee. Yes, I think it's fine to close. So, Lucian. Sure. All right, everyone. Um, so, just so you see what I see, I'm going to stop the vote. Make, wait, let me make sure this is the treasurer vote. Yeah, stopping the vote. And then I will results. Here's the results. So, Marianne. Congratulations, you're stuck with us for another two years. <laughs> Bernard, do not be dissuaded. We will certainly find ways for you to lend your expertise and, and uh, right. willingness to. Thank you, everyone, for participating in the election. Hey, Mary Emma. Okay, thank you, everyone. With that, I believe, Betty, you were done. I believe that is the last committee of the night. Um, Next time, Betty, I'm going to make you split into two <laughs> or start you first off on the top. All right, everybody, thank you so much for your time and your attention. I hope to see you tomorrow um, as we celebrate and uh, Diana's amazing work over the last 10 years. And with that, I close. Oh, and please go to the Battery Park City 
north and west presentation. It is a stop by. You don't have to spend hours and hours, um, but it would be a good place to see what's going on on the northern tip from possibly North Moore Street down the west side highway across Chambers and below. So with that two notices, I close the meeting at 952. Thank you for all your time and attention. And Diana, tomorrow's another day. What time tomorrow and where? Thank you, Tammy. What time tomorrow and where?